Hey everyone, how's everybody doing? We are live here. My name is uh, Scott Wilkinson. I'm a professional body piercer. I've been piercing a long time, since like 1994. Sorry about the slow weird setup here. I uh, rearranged the room, trying to do a little bit of a different background here for you guys. So um, we're gonna get to the chats here. There's Emily Sakuma, how are you doing today? Dog person with a cat, hey, how are you doing today? Uh, KJ Fields, hello. And Christine says, hi from Iowa. Happy Wednesday. Yeah, happy Wednesday, everybody. Sound will get better here in a second when I can talk into the microphone. Um, yeah, as you can see, I have a slightly different background here, and we're going to be taking some questions for about two hours. I'm alone at the moment, but I believe Kelsey will be joining us in a little bit. She had some things going on this morning. Now, the thing is, is if you're asking some questions, be as thorough as possible. Be respectful. Um, but the better you ask your question, excuse me, the better, ask you, the better you ask your question, the better I can answer it for you. So let's see if I can get uh, my mouse to work here. Do, do, do. Takes me a second here. Who else is here? Uh, looks like we have uh, 452 Natasha. Hello. I show says hello. Chip Douglas. What's up, Chip? How you doing, man? And just Erica here is as well. Becky C. I uh, hope you're doing well. I'm doing very, very well. I appreciate that. Um, I'm having a problem. I have like all these monitors and trying to get my mouse to go onto the screen. It's not working at this point here. Let's uh, see where I'm at. Hey, I thought I just saw it a second ago. And who else do we got here? We have, uh, there, I found the screen, good. Ruru, hello, have a good, hope you have a good day. I hope you have a good day too. A unique Classroom says hello. Um, and then we have, it's 204 here in Virginia. We're in Las Vegas here. Las Vegas, it is, uh, 11.05. Well, you're, I'm a minute or so after you comment, so. And Shauna M. Rogers says, hello from Washington State. Glad you're here. I'm going to start out with a nice little uh, cheers for everyone. Cheers from Dutch Brothers. Um, again, my name's Scott Wilkinson. I'm a professional body piercer. If you haven't hit the like and subscribe, of course, please do that for us. Let me move this away just a little bit more. There we are. And like I said, Kelsey will be joining us in a little bit here. And we're just going to be taking questions. So if you guys have questions, give me the best questions you got as far as piercing related stuff. Or if you want to go personal, I don't really care about that either. Uh, Lasso says hello. God, I love how everyone just kind of jumps in here real quick. We got 22 viewers. Um, now, as far as, uh, let's go into a little piercing news here. Um, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I'm just making stuff up as we go. Uh, the thing is, is I'm planning on changing my channel. I have a lot of plans for this. So I'm guessing next week I'm not going to be able to do a live show. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a live show. And then I'm putting out like maybe a 45 minute to an hour long show of a whole bun bunch of mixture of things. So I've been recording already getting started with that. It seems to be going where I want this channel to go. So I'm super excited about that. Um, but it looks like we got some questions coming in. Um, Emily Sakuma, we'll start with you. It says, uh, why do I keep getting hardened tissue around my Ashley piercing? Um, they are three years old, not really bumps, although the tissue is a little bit raised. It's just excessive scar tissue. It's really, really frustrating when that happens. Um, I've had it before on eyebrows, it's real common. Um, sometimes when piercings get just a little bit irritated, once it's irritated, the scar tissue almost reactivates, I guess you could say. I don't know, it's kind of weird, but I don't think it's really anything to be worried about. It's just, uh, it kind of does go back and forth. I've seen it several times, so. Um, Giselle Murillo, hi Scott, I have an almost healed rook and I went to Six Flags last weekend and I got on a bumpy ride that hit my ear against the restraints hard, ouch. Um, now the piercing bump, how can I get rid of it? Uh, it's gonna take some time, it's gonna take a little bit of um, caressing. Once you get an irritation bump, which is exactly what you said it was, that ride just got bumped and hit it, it's an irritated, it's gonna form to try to protect itself. So once it stops being irritated, the faster it's gonna heal. Now even just slightly sleeping on your piercing, combing your hair and getting it slammed on things, that's gonna be steps backwards and it's gonna be a lot tougher for you to actually get it to heal. Now one thing I do suggest is using emu oil. Emu oil is um, the fatty tissue from like the emu in its upper back. It works amazing for calming down upset piercings. You can buy it online. Um, 
honestly, I don't know where else you can buy it. Maybe some sort of a, a vitamin or holistic shop might have something like that, or you're gonna be your local piercing studio. Now it's an older remedy. Not a lot of the newer shops seem to be using this as much, but it really, really does work. You wait, it will make a comeback. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be the best thing. And it's just gonna take some time. Just be patient. Make, oh, and if your piercing is swollen up too much, you might need to get a longer bar. You said it's a rook, you should be fine. Um, but yeah, keep those uh, irritation uh, crusties off there as well. Uh, Becky C, how do you feel about stacking small gauge jewelry with a large gauge? Um, I worry about a certain cheese cutter effect. Do you think stacking, say, uh, uh, I just lost it, yeah. Say a 10 gauge with 16 gauge rigs could be harmful. I'm, talking septum um that's a fantastic question to be honest with you um the reason the cheese cutter thing works is because it's a single wire by itself and if you pull it it's going to kind of like thin that hole in the bottom where where it's way through now if you took a whole bunch of wires it acts as one type of wire so being it's a stack it still technically is like having a 10 gauge in there it's going to misshape the hole a little tiny bit but honestly it should go back fairly fairly quick or back to normal as long as you don't have it in there for a long 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 time sometimes it creates more of an oval shape instead of the round shape um you can still wear big jewelry though, so it, it'll still work out for you. But no, no cheese cutter effect when you do the actual stacking. Great question, Becky, thank you. Chip Douglas, I was wondering, what is the best, most common gauge for male nipple piercings? Great question. Now the thing is, is males generally don't have a very developed nipple and uh, um, I'm gonna get back to the question, just one second. I've reset everything up. It sounds like everything's okay, so if my sound doesn't seem right, let me know, guys, in the comments. I'll check here in a second. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to say that before we got too far in. But anyways, Chip, uh, wondering the best, most common gauge for nipple piercings. Now, male nipples are generally fairly underdeveloped, so 14 is generally the smallest I'm gonna go. Sometimes you need, generally you go right to the base of the nipple, uh, but sometimes you need to go a little bit more into the areola to get enough tissue. Once you get it in there, the tissue will kind of regenerate and it grows a little tiny bit. I mean, my nipples were pierced at like a 14. I think I have a four gauge in there now from stretching. And it, it's, you see the nipple, it kind of stretched a little bit and kind of worked with it, but sometimes you need to go a little bit into the areola. I won't do anything thinner. I used to do 16 gauge and then say, oh, you need to stretch up, but no one ever came in to stretch it up and then you have that possibility of the cheese cutter in the nipple which would suck so bad so um 14 my favorite ultimately i would love to pierce all nipples at a 12 gauge if i could but unfortunately the industry all the jewelry manufacturers anyone who makes jewelry always makes it for a 14 gauge so i standard i generally do the 14 gauge now if someone comes in and says there's going to be a lot of nipple play or getting pulled or they're really rough with it i would definitely suggest going to the 12 gauge over the 14. 14s work really really good um but like i said my preference would be 12 but society says hey we like 14 better so i do 14s thank you for asking that chip hope you're doing real well and uh, is it Mariah Kleiss? Hi, Scott. This is my first time tuning into your live. You're awesome human being. Well, thank you very much. I'm so glad you got a chance to make it into our live. We love having new people and our old people here all the time. Um, such a good community. Everyone has such positive things to say. And uh, it's constantly learning, you know. It's a it's a learning forum, basically. I learn from you guys, you guys are learning from me. Sharing the knowledge here makes our community that much stronger and better, and we heal our stuff up way better too. So with that, cheers to piercings. And cheers to you, Mariah. All right, Evelyn Bongertz. Why won't my con shield? <laughs> this thing's angry for about a year now. Not infected, still just angry. Um, so here's the deal. A lot of factors. Number one, I hope you have a stud in there and not a hoop. A lot of people love the look of the hoop and it looks awesome, but 
they suck to heal with. So put a stud in if you have a ring in there, that will change everything. The right size stud too. If you put in way too long of a stud, it's gonna be the same thing as the ring where it's just gonna twist and contort as you're sleeping and laying on it. Number two is if you wear any sort of a mask or any sort of thing that goes behind your ear, that band to hold the mask on, that band causes a lot of problems to the conscious. Now, if you're wearing something like that, I'm not saying don't, I'm saying get a mask extender. It's like a piece of plastic that goes behind your ear or sometimes people wear headbands and there's little buttons and you can put it on there that can help a ton too and the last thing i'm going to say is uh proper aftercare um i don't know after a year something's going wrong if you're still over cleaning with the wrong stuff that can cause problems or um it could be environment sometimes it's the work environment if you're on chemicals and things like that or if you're around hair you're cutting hair dyeing hair or you're constantly getting it done those are factors but as far as the aftercare goes wound wash spray which is sterile saline solution you just spray it on the front and back wait till those crusties get nice and soft and wipe off crusties with a paper towel absolutely no peroxide rubbing alcohol neosporin most medical products like that are not made to go inside the body so they do cause a lot more problems than they actually help um other than that the only other thing i could say is maybe an allergic reaction to the metals so make sure you have a high quality metal in there because if you have steel there is nickel in there and a lot of people have problems with nickel so maybe change over to titanium if you don't have that so um hopefully that answers your question again ask as thorough of a question as you can and i'll get to the best the best of my ability to answer that for you and moving on to emily skuma can't wait for the channel change up me too i've been wanting this for a long time i just wasn't sure how to put it together i finally got it all all the formula put in my head and um it should be pretty fun it should be pretty fun um i'll give you guys a little uh uh, heads up here or a little uh, sneak peek not sneak peek but I'll tell you what's gonna happen um, I'm gonna ask you guys to start sending in video questions so I'm gonna start up another um, email thing where you can send it to I don't have it yet so don't send these video uh, questions in but get if you have some ideas put them together and uh it'd be great that way when i have a guest piercer here or like maybe on skype or something like that um we will take the top questions and we will discuss those questions together as two piercers so instead of like i'm not going to have well it's not going to be the same as a live chat here it's going to be basically a show so i need to get content from you guys um and then the other thing is if you're piercers from other states other countries i'm looking for piercers to be guests on the show so we'll be able to have different content from all over the world which i think would be amazing um and then i want to do like jewelry spotlights because every month it seems like there's always all these jewelry companies coming out with new ideas and new designs and i want to keep you guys up to date so that way you can kind of see what's going on um and i'm really going to try to get down on the las vegas strip to talk to people live to, to ask them some questions talk about their piercing some stories and hopefully i can add that in as well so it's going to be a big show of a bunch of different things on there but it's going to be fun it's going to be a lot of fun and thank you very much for being here thanks emily and Lassa says, I got a mid-helix piercing about two months ago. I have now developed the dreaded bump. Ugh. Best way to get it healed. Um, make sure you have a ring in there. Uh, like I was just talking about earlier with the whole conch situation, make sure it's good quality jewelry, maybe titanium, proper aftercare with the wound wash spray. Um, and if you need to, like that emu oil can really, really help really helps so um buy it online uh desert palms emu ranch is the one that i prefer i believe you can get it on amazon so and uh good luck to you those those helixes are rough when you say mid helix i'm assuming right in the middle of the ear here i'm not sure why but that one is rougher to heal than any other part on the ear even though sometimes it seems like it gets into a little bit more lobe like fattier tissue you'd think that the blood supply would help it but i think it's because that's the first thing that we ever hit on our ear you know the first thing that's going to touch the pillow or whatever yeah they're rough they're rough sadie henry how would you advise someone to get a three inch stretched earlobes Woo! well you're going to probably need at least 10 to 20 years it's going to take a long time to get up to that size um it took me about 10 years to get up to about two inches. I had to do some relief cuts. I lost my earlobes. Not everybody can get to the three inches. You have to have a lot of tissue to work with. You have to stretch properly because if you overstretch with the goal of getting that big, you're going to thin out your ears. So it's a real slow, gradual process 
process. Um, I would suggest a lot of half sizes, maybe work with some glass jewelry because you'll be able to do half steps that way. Um, if your earlobes are not pierced already, let your piercer know and maybe pierce them slightly higher up, not exactly in the center to make sure you have enough tissue to get to that super, super big size. Um, and massaging, that would be the best advice I could possibly give you. Like when you start stretching, keep the blood flow going. You should need to be massaging animals. Normally we tell you don't touch your piercings. Earlobes like that are gonna be different once you get to a larger size. When you're at home, take your plugs out, get some lotion, just really rub that lotion in there and keep the circulation going. And that's gonna allow that tissue to get as big as possible. Um, I wish you the best of luck. It's gonna plan on 20 years. You might be able to do it a little sooner than that, but if you do it properly, I mean, like it's gonna take a year to get to a zero or a double zero if you stretch properly from a normal size. So it, it takes a while. Um, but pretty awesome. Good to have goals like that. It's funny because like when I first started stretching mine, my goal was a double zero. And those are the famous last words for stretching piercings. Like I'm only gonna go to a double zero. You're never gonna stop at a double zero, people. Never ever. And here, now we're starting at three inches. So six inches might be the goal then, huh? <laughs> you know, it was weird. When I had two and a half inch earlobes, I still felt like my ears weren't even that big. Even though I could get an arm or, you know, it, a soda can in my ear. It's crazy. All right. And I just about lost my spot. Said something about sea salt soaks is where we're at. Lassa says sea salt soaks for the mid helix, um, the dreaded bump. Now here's the deal with sea salt soaks. They can be amazing if done exactly right. Not guessing right, exactly right. Number one, you wanna use distilled or some sort of filtered water. You want it to be heated up, but not too, too hot. You need to do exactly eight ounces of that water per one fourth of a teaspoon of sea salt. Now, I'm not sure where you're from, if you know what a, a teaspoon is, but it's equivalent to barely a, a pinch of salt. Look it up online, see what the proper measurement is if you're not if you don't understand what a, a quarter teaspoon is, but you need to mix an exact salt water solution. Too much salt dries your skin out, not enough doesn't do it uh, the right, it doesn't make the saline properly. And then on top of it, you have to put this into a clean vessel. So a clean glass, um, generally stay away from plastic. Sometimes the plastics can get in the water, but I do like the plastics that they haven't been used and you can dispose of them. So if it's a, a quick soak and the water's not too hot, you might be okay there. But I prefer glass. Um, that way you can clean out super, super well and you have a good clean vessel before you get started. And soak it for five or 10 minutes. Um, another thing you can do uh, is, I haven't heard this in a while, but chamomile tea bags. A chamomile tea, you know, like the little things. So you steep your tea bag a little bit and kind of make it so it's used and then let it take it out. And that wet tea bag putting directly on your piercing can calm and uh, soothe it quite a bit. I really wish I knew why or how this works, but there's something in there that just makes it feel better and makes those bumps go away. So chamomile tea. Don't experiment with other tea bags. It has to be chamomile tea bags if you're going to use it. Um, yeah, yeah, so, but that's my thing on sea salt soaks. I get off track real easy. Ray says, oh, wait, wait, we're gonna back up a little bit, see if I, how my sound is. I haven't seen anything here yet. Doo -doo -doo. Seems like we're doing good here. No one seems to be complaining about, good. Yeah, I rearranged my room. I don't know if you can tell or not, but I'm, I'm sitting in a different direction here, and uh, yeah, yeah, I like it. My room seems a lot less cluttered, too. There was a lot of stuff in here, and you couldn't even move through here, so feels better. Ray says, I got my nostril conch and rook done on Friday the 13th last month, and now I have an irritation bump on all of them. I've been cleaning them with the saline spray and using emu, but nothing helps. Now, question number one is on the Friday the 13th sale, did you get the whole piercing with jewelry included for $13 a piece, or was it a $13 piercing fee plus the cost of the jewelry? Because if the jewelry was included in that $13 fee, that could be some pretty low end jewelry and uh, you could be having a problem with the jewelry itself. It also kind of depends on the angle it's at. Um, nostril, contra rook. Nostril's notorious for getting um, caught on, on towels and rags, so hopefully you're not doing that. 
Hopefully you have studs in there and not rings. Um, the Rook can heal with the ring, but studs work way better. I wish I had a little bit more information for you. I, I really don't know. Um, try not to be sleeping on it. Clean it only once a day and only if you have crusties on there. Um, and like I said, if it was $13 per piercing, maybe look into the jewelry because I bet it could be lower end jewelry if that's the case. When I used to have a Friday the 13th sale, it'd be $13 piercing fee plus the jewelry. So you're still getting quality jewelry. I just lowered the overall, the fee itself. Excuse me. <coughs> so dog person with a cat buying emu oil modon right on um emu oil is so good uh whenever i have an irritation like an irritation from like when i'm shaving my head emu oil i put it on there um anything like you know if i've had a pimple and i and it gets too irritated it immediately goes back i've had burns before that immediately heals it emu oil is an amazing thing and the reason emu oil is so amazing is the viscosity of the oil matches humans perfectly which basically means if you put the oil on it doesn't just sit on the top of the skin it actually absorbs into the skin and gets to where it needs to go and that uh emu oil is filled with vitamins and nutrients that we need to heal and to grow and it's kind of the same thing so it's it's one of the few oils that i ever suggest it it works amazing it's good stuff and we're gonna move on to amber hazel hi how long do you recommend waiting before changing a nostril piercing to a ring I have a good solid answer and that is when it's ready. Now, when it's ready is generally around four months and that's if you haven't had any bumps, any irritations, you haven't caught it too hard. And if it seems like it's healed in about a month after having it, you're pretty much done with crusties, four months is when I would suggest putting the ring in. Now, the thing is, is you heal a tubus scar tissue. I got the hiccups a lot. You got a tube of scar tissue and it's really tight around that stud. And now the thing is, is you're putting a curve inside that straight piercing. So you want that hole to be loose enough to where you put the curve where it doesn't pinch too much. That's why we want to wait about four months before putting the ring into a cartilage piece like that. And that goes with the cartilage in your, in your helix too and the conch. You know, because the piercing's straight and you're putting a slight curve in there and it can cause problems. Now, nostrils generally a little thicker than like some of the helixes, but conches, they're definitely thick enough where it will be affected. So get pierced with studs. Good question. Thank you. And Christine says, I'm hoping to get my floating navel done at Bevel Piercing in Minneapolis. With the winter coming up, would you recommend I wait uh, to get it pierced in, uh, because of clothing being put on it? Now, first of all, I love that you're getting pierced at Bevel because my friend Nate, I believe, is the one who owns that shop. Um, Nate used to pierce. I've known Nate for many, many years. I knew Nate when he first started his apprenticeship. Nate is amazing, um, a great piercer. And next time I go back to Minneapolis, I need to go visit that shop because the shop looks amazing. And uh, if it's Nate's shop, I'm sure it is. So now as far as waiting because of the clothes if you have high waisted pants that are rubbing right up against it and summertime your shorts don't rub up against it maybe it's better to wait but the other factor is is do you go swimming in the summer because if you're going in lakes rivers pools or hot tubs that's something you want to avoid for a month minimum sometimes several months so it's kind of a factor that way now there's tagaderm patches which you can put over the top of your piercing and that will protect it from swimming and kind of also protect it a little bit from pants if the pants are rubbing up against it now with the floating navel being it's going to be pierced an angle in a little bit more so you only see kind of like the top gem it's a little easier to put a band-aid or something over the top to protect it if your clothes are rubbing up against it but that's kind of the factor i would weigh things out with is like the swimming versus the clothes rubbing right up against it i mean your your shirts your pants will touch it to a certain degree you're just trying to find the minimal amount of irritation and if you go in tell them scott says hi um, depending on who does your piercing, I'm sure he has a couple of piercers there, but uh, yeah, awesome, awesome. That's a small world. Agar says, hi man, I love your videos. They're very entertaining and informative. Well, I'm glad to keep you guys entertained and I love informing you. I mean, piercing's my lifestyle, it runs through my blood. I can't not talk about it. People always apologize. Like, I know you're not working right now, but and, like, I'll talk about it all day, all night. I probably dream about it, you know? it's. I feel like I was meant to be a piercer. I just don't understand. If I'm meant to be a piercer, why do I have such big hands? It just doesn't make any sense. 
to weirdness. And thanks for watching, Agar. Aisho says, my tragus was pierced with Bioflex after nine months of struggling with a bump. I found out that the backside went up a lot higher than the front. Is it migrated? Can it still heal nicely? Okay, so let me hear. Let me grab one of my ears. I haven't pulled one of these out in a while. Okay, so your tragus was pierced with Bioflex, which is kind of a plastic stuff. I'm not a fan of it. Some people can heal it up but I'm not a fan of it. Now, after nine months of struggling with the bump, I found out that the backside went up a lot higher than the front. So it got pierced here, and I'm guessing it either went can you, higher that way. So it's kind of like, so the gem points down is my guess. Um, that could be with the jewelry, depending on what you're wearing. It could have been pierced at a wrong angle. Um, now, the other thing is, like you said, the backside is higher. Maybe they might also mean like deeper or more shallow. I'm not sure what you mean by higher other than higher. Um, they can migrate and change um, to move to where it's comfortable. It kind of depends on what you're wearing. You're wearing Bioflex. It's not a ring. Unless you were laying on it all the time would be the only way it would migrate to something like that. Because generally, it's going to want to be as perpendicular as possible through the least amount of tissue. It's not going to try to force its way and create more tissue to dig through. So that would be my two cents is that it was probably pierced at a slight angle would be my guess. That's my guess. All right. Yeah, yeah. Good question. Thanks for asking that. I hope that answers your question. Christine, also going to be placing a custom order with BVLA soon for a Maryland hinge clicker for my septum. Beautiful. Um, yellow gold is my yellow gold and synthetic green opal. Ooh, at a 10 gauge. An investment for sure, but so excited. Um, yeah, you're going to drop a pretty penny on that. A 10 gauge yellow gold. Oh, that's going to be absolutely beautiful. I'm jealous. You know, I thought about doing that too. Like I want to stretch some piercings out and I thought about putting my septum back in, but everything I have is gold and my septum was a two gauge and I can't imagine what a two gauge gold clicker would cost more than I want to spend. I know you're going to spend a, a pretty amount, but also that's a centerpiece. A septum is a centerpiece of your face. And when you have something like that, that's a statement. And that is going to be epic. I would love to see that. Congratulations. Malice Black Dagger. Did I said that right? Yeah, I did. All right. I had my conch done with a dermal punch. Wow. Now, a dermal punch or a biopsy punch is basically... Normally, needles make a crescent incision and push tissue off to the side. Dermal punches are basically like a razor blade in the shape of a circle, and you just cut and remove tissue. Sometimes if you want to go to a large conch, large conch gauge, you can stretch, but it's really, really tough, and a lot of people punch right to that size. It's not legal in every state and every county, so you got to kind of look into that, but um, pretty epic, and I'm guessing it was pretty loud, too. And when you do those dermal punches, for real, you hear some cracking, and everyone in the room is going to hear a... Not even joking, not even joking. But awesome, Malice, awesome. I'm curious what size you went to. And Zula Mazda here says, hope you're having a great week, Scott, and chat. Thank you, yeah, we have a great group of people in here today, we're having a lot of fun. Um, and uh, I got my Dutch brothers, so cheers to all you coffee drinkers or whatever you're drinking out there. I'm, yeah, it's gonna be all times of the day, so depending on where you're at in the world. So, And hey, give us a little shout out where you're from. If you're from another country, another state, I'm here in sunny Las Vegas, and we're actually getting into like the, the fall, winterish season. Um, it's funny, because I, I talk to my parents on a regular basis who are from Minnesota, and like they've been at 30 degree weather, they've had snow, they've had all kinds, of, and it's like, we get down to about 50 at night, which is, you know, like hoodie weather, but I still don't need a jacket. But I think it's because I have Minnesota blood in me. All right, Chris K. I dropped a, I dropped a wound wash spray, and after that it didn't work, so I bought another one. That sucks. Um, if it is Neil Med wound wash, I know they guarantee their stuff. So look on the back if you didn't throw if you didn't throw it away already. Um, they guarantee their stuff, so I'm not sure if they would take a return or whatnot. But generally, they're really really good about it. And uh, yeah, so that's a bummer. That's a bummer. And Mr. Chip Douglas, 
Thanks, God. Do you have any advice for aspiring body piercings to land an apprenticeship? I've recently relo relocated to my state's capital to pursue my dream goal of becoming a body piercer. Awesome. Um, you got to find someone who's actually a knowledgeable piercer who's willing to share that with you. Um, some people charge for it. Some people just take you on. Some people will pay you like probably minimum wage and you work front counter and you do a bunch of the, the shop work and things like that. So there's different ways of going about it, um, but make sure you're getting a legit apprenticeship. Just because I say yes, I've seen people get used for this where it's just like you become shop help for a while, then they say, no, you're not working on They fire you and you never get your license. So you really got to do your homework there. Um, find someone who's passionate and uh, yeah, I wish you the best of luck. But yeah, you're going to have to go around and get pierced by them probably one or two times before they would consider taking you on. And that's kind of how that would work. So um, develop a little bit of a relationship with that person. And uh, while you're there, say, hey, I'm thinking about it for the future, about being a body piercer. You know, do you ever do apprenticeships? And they'll tell you straight up. They'll tell you straight up. So good luck, buddy. Evelyn Bongarts. All right. Bongarts. I don't know how to say that. I'm trying. Thanks, Scott. I think the bar is too long. There's a stud in there, um, but it is so long that there's a lot of movement, I guess. Uh, I only use the wound wash. Perfect. Um, definitely sh shorten up the post. Uh, if the bar is way too long, that movement, you're pulling the crusties through. Once it's the right size and the jewelry stops moving, things work way better. It makes a huge difference. So downsize that. And Lassa says, are you seeing any trends with the silver haired group? Silver haired group. Seen any? I, I don't know what you're talking about, to be honest with you. I'm not sure what the silver haired group is. And I don't have my computer right in front of me because I have it in the other room, so I don't have access to checking it. So um, I'm going to write it down, though, because if I don't take notes, it's tough for me to remember. So silver haired group. I will write that down. And. Michelle Scott says, hey, I was wondering if you had a brand or a place to buy emu oil that you recommend. And how long do you recommend keeping to keep using saline wash for a new nose piercing? Well, you want to use the wound wall, wound wall. Let's try that again. So you want to use the wound wash for probably about a month to two months. Once you're pretty much finished with a lot of the crusties and scabs and things that'll be on your nose, you don't really need to do it anymore. Um, and typically after about a month, it's not as much of an open wound. So it's not going to do as much for you in that situation. But if there's redness, irritation, continue with that. Now, as far as the emu oil goes, I like Desert Palms Emu Ranch. Um, I think they're located in like Arizona. I need to get a hold of them and I'm gonna go down there and I can see if I can get a video out of them because I would love to inform you guys more and really get down to the roots of why it's so awesome. But I think you can buy it on Amazon. Desert Palms Emu Oil is what you wanna look it up. So let me see, Silver Haired Group. All right, and Flo saying, hi, Scott, hope you're doing great. What's the healing time for a third lobe piercing? Also, is it necessary to downsize the post? All right, Flo, this is, a lot of these questions can be tricky because it's situational. Now, some people have room to do five earlobe piercings. Some people have room to do two, maybe three. Now, once you start getting into that cartilage area or it touches the cartilage area, it's gonna significantly lengthen the healing process. Most earlobes are gonna be healed up in about a month to two months, but if it's on that cusp of being borderline the helix slash cartilage piercing or that lobe, it almost jumps up to six months. It's really, really weird. It may feel like, oh, you didn't even hit the cartilage, but if it's in that area, it's so irritated. I'm not sure why that one takes longer to heal up, but it's almost like a cartilage piercing sometimes. So um, if it's just lobe and you have plenty of room before the cartilage, you're gonna be healing this up in about a month or two months though. Hopefully that helps. And uh, Shauna M. Rogers says, I love the emu oil. I also use it when making my lotions or tattoo balm. It's really an amazing product. It works super, super nicely. Um, I've always had it work. You know, it's about, like my doth piercing once in a while is gonna get all irritated and infected. Not necessarily infected, but irritated. And I put it on there and a day or two later, it's back to normal. Um, that emu oil is worth looking into. It's a multi-use thing. Um, 
My low G says, how long will it take to get to an inch? I'm at 12 gauge right now. Um, 12 gauge right now, and if you do about a month and a half to two months between each stretch, you're going to be at the zero, double zero in about a year. I would say about two to three years is probably how it's going to go. It kind of depends on how stretchy your ears are, um, how often you're actually stretching, when it's ready. You know, sometimes we say six to eight weeks between each stretch, but sometimes when, it, when things start getting a little tighter, sometimes it's like three to six months. It's different for everyone. And some people have a max. I knew a piercer who couldn't get past double zero. Couldn't get past it. Worked and worked and worked, and it's like, it's just double zero is what he has, so, yep. And uh, Sadie Henry says, thank you. You are very welcome. I'm going to take a little uh, cheers to that. And Delilah Arts. Hi, Scott. I recently got my paired nostrils, and they are even from looking at me, but they are very wonky on the inside. Is that okay? They seem to be healing fine. Um, if you plan on wearing a ring or a hoop, that's going to change the way the ring is laying in your nose. Now, if one's straight in and the other one's kind of like this, granted, the gems are pointing in a little different directions. And um, like I said, if one's more this angle and one's this, you're going to have a bunch of ring hanging out of one and the other one's going to be nice and snug on the other. So you might not be happy if you want rings. Uh, also kind of depends on the jewelry you're wearing too on the outside as far as studs. If you're wearing larger surface tops, if they're different angles, one's going to sit flat and the other one's probably not. So keep that in mind. And if it's really bothering you, figure out which one's the better one, the one that's more perpendicular, more straight in, as opposed to by maybe shooting down or at an angle and take it out and have it just redone at the right angle. But you're going to want to give it probably a couple weeks to a month before you get it repierced. So, um, yeah, it's frustrating. It's frustrating, especially when you start getting it heal and things are going well and then you realize that afterwards. Yeah. So, all right. I, I'm, you do a little faster here. All right, Shy Girl says, I got five piercings done this summer. Only one professionally and the other the other one was only, and it was the only one that got bumps or irritated. Uh, sometimes that happens. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean it's professionally or unprofessional. It's the what you do to it afterwards. It could be sleeping on it, getting your hair product cutting uh, inside. The, there's a bunch of things. That doesn't make home piercing okay because I guarantee you the one in the shop was done cleaner and there's less of a chance of you catching any sort of bloodborne pathogen disease. Um, also, when you're piercing yourself, you're not hitting the right angles. So when you want to wear rings, hoops, they're going to be sitting at kind of wonky angles as far as that goes. So um, yeah, I don't ever condone getting pierced at home. You can't prove it to me that you can do it right. Uh, I can guarantee you, you don't have an autoclave at your house. You know, autoclaves start at about four thousand, five thousand dollars. You know, to buy a new one, you can find used ones cheaper, but then you have to run spore testing through. You have to order the autoclave bags. Um, you need to have the proper needles, which I'm sure you don't have a license for to get the good quality ones. So you're using, you know, really dull, bad. The list goes on and on. I. Don't condone home piercings, but yeah, sometimes bumps happen. Doesn't matter if you did it at home or not. It's from the irritation afterwards. Um, Mr. Monkberry, hi, I'm stretching my septum. One stretch every month and a half. Uh, I'm currently at three millimeters and pus is coming out of my septum. What should I do? Well, shoot. That's not good. Um, if it's crusties is one thing. If it's actual pus, you could have signs of an infection. Um, Maybe taking some hot water, not don't burn yourself, but like soaking yourself in some warm water that can kind of help drain some of the stuff out of there. If you're not using wound wash, definitely keep that area clean. Um, if you can put in some sort of a plug, something that's not a ring so you don't have weight pulling down on it, um, will probably help you out because right now if you have any sort of a ring and it's spinning or rotating you're pulling those crusties through and it's you have a lot of crusties so that would be my suggestion and if you get to the point where it's it's actually infected you should probably see a doctor maybe get some antibiotics or something like that but if you have pus coming out of there that means you overstretched remember a proper stretch really shouldn't hurt it'll be a little tight but it shouldn't hurt but go to the plug that would be my suggestion uh, Terry Enby says, I used, 
Uh, I used to soak my child's baby wipes in chamomile tea when I got when they got a rash. It's great for irritation. It really is. It's good to hear that. I've never heard of anyone else using it for other things, but yeah, it just it calms things down. Uh, thanks, Terry Envy. I appreciate that. Um, Ray says both were included. Yes. Ah, uh, shoot. I don't remember what we were talking about with Ray. I'm gonna scroll back up and see if I can figure this out. <laughs> Okay, nostril. Ah, the Friday the 13th piercings. Yeah. Um, it's the, both were included. So, yeah, I would say look into getting some higher quality jewelry because they're probably using some inexpensive jewelry. I mean, they got to cover the cost of the piercing needles, the cleaning supplies. Um, the shop gets their cut and the piercer gets their cut. Plus, you got to cover the cost of the jewelry. It's some pretty low cost stuff. So, get some quality jewelry in there. That'll probably help. Uh, Milo G says, I'm curious, why aren't you an APP member? Purely curiosity. Um, I've been a member in the past. Uh, there's been a lot of politics and a lot of weird things that kind of go back and forth. Some things I disagree with. Um, and a lot of it has to do with um, the, the acceptance of the jewelry and the, the you know that kind of stuff. I follow a lot of the APP protocols and standards, but yeah. Um, like, I'm a big fan of Invictus Jewelry, and I don't hide that by any means. I, It's not as high of a polish as the Nata Metal and Industrial Steel, but I still had really, really good luck on healing, and it brings the price down for my customers so they don't have to spend as much money to get their piercings. And it works really, really well. And if people want to upgrade, I do have other higher quality jewelry like Leroy and things like that in the shop, but um, most people are totally happy with it. It's, it's really good quality jewelry, and they're not an APP-approved member. So, um, And you know what's really funny is, like, I know that there's a lot of APP members who are using Invictus, and they're just basically lying and saying they're not. You know, because I know that, like, for the membership for an APP, you have to show one month of your jewelry invoices, basically showing that you're using APP-approved jewelry, but the rest of the year they use the cheaper stuff. So, and I know this, I've talked to some of the different sales people and they say that this, this happens all the time. You know, they sell to APP members. So yeah. Um, so yeah, politics is just that. I go to the APP conference and it's a great organization. It's just, uh, I don't know, until they approve some of the companies I use. Savannah, do you need to downsize a Labrette nose stud? What happens if you don't? Um, you don't have to. Now, this one here, you don't ever really want your nose stud to be tight on your nostril because there's a disc on the inside and you have to be able to get a hold of it to be able to pull that stud out. So I like leaving a little tiny bit of room in there. Um, the only thing is, is if it's way too long, it might be sticking out, you're more prone to catching it. So if it's not sticking out and if it doesn't bother you, it's really not that big of a deal. So, good question. And Karsten Crossley. Hi, Scott. Just wondering, um, I have a new septum piercing and I'm and I'm sick at the moment. Would you still clean it two times a day or would you have any tips? Yeah. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, sometimes when you get piercings, you can actually get sick after you get pierced because your immune system is a little bit weaker. So vitamin C, multivitamins, things like that are gonna help you get back to normal much, much quicker. Um, try not to over irritate your piercing. Now, th there's a fine line here because when you're sick, you're probably getting a lot more crusties. Now, if those crusties are getting pulled inside and it's causing it to be sore, then you need to be cleaning them. Or I'd rather it be a little irritated from keeping the crusties off than the crusties getting pulled through. So that's where I would go with that. So honestly, you might need to do it like three to four times a day if it's causing a problem. Now, if you can actually flip the jewelry up inside your nose so it doesn't move around while you're sick, that can actually help quite a bit. Um, and then after like maybe a shower, or after you soak your nose, you might be able to soften up the crusties to be able to pull it down to clean it out a little bit better. But yeah, keep cleaning that piercing. Do the best you can with it. Uh, good question. Hope you feel better. All right. Aisho says, uh, several piercers told me to get rid of the piercing bump, so I need to make my saline solution intense. What? So is this wrong information? Um, yes, it is. Um, 
Okay, so you need to make your saline intense. That means if you're adding too much salt, I can't remember the proper terminology, it's hypertonic or hypotonic. But one is like too, too much salt, which can cause all the skin cells to kind of dry. And um, I, I know like varicose veins where people have like a lot of the veins on their legs and they need to get rid of, they will inject hypertonic because it's gonna cause everything to collapse in on itself. Your body's made up of salt water and you're trying to match that as perfectly as possible. When you add that salt on there, I know where they're trying to go here and I'll explain it in a second. They think it's gonna dry it out and make it better, but it's not, it's causing more damage. Now, the thing is, is you might've heard people when they have piercing bumps to use the aspirin method. Now, I don't really ever suggest this because this is the absolute last resort. And that's where you take crushed aspirin, you, you turn it into like a little powder and then you add a drop of water and it makes it into a paste. And that's like an acid for the skin where you can put it on there, it can help help relieve some of the bump. But if you don't get rid of the source of the problem, it doesn't fix it. Now, where I'm going with this is a lot of people took that with the sea salt thinking it's the same thing and it's not. It has to be a saline solution which is mixed exactly perfect. Now, if this was truly the case where you could do more intense, why don't they sell more hypertonic or hypotonic saline at the store? Why is it always the exact same that matches the body? So I say it is wrong information. Don't listen to them. Um, maybe clean it once you're no, don't even know. That's just going to irritate it more. It's going to make your bump bigger. So the only thing I would suggest is find the source of the problem. Get rid of that. Maybe use emu oil um, and maybe change your jewelry if you need to. So, but yeah, I think that is wrong information. Good question though. Thanks for bringing that up. Ray, do you think downsizing my conch slash nostril jewelry will help? I've also seen some things that say if the bump is there for too long, it becomes permanent. Is that true? It kind of does. Um, Generally, that's going to be for months and months and months before it actually uh, happens. So, hey, we have Nova here today. What's up, buddy? How's it going? Doing really well. How are you doing? Good. Good. Do we have Kelsey coming today? I think so. Is she? Okay, cool. Come yeah. on in. You want to come on in or? Yeah. Sure. All right. We got Nova sure. here joining us again. Come hang. Hey, everybody. So here, let me pull this aside here. Yeah, yeah Nova's been working right? for me for the last, huh? Month, two months? Yeah, uh, Couple almost months? three months, I think. Three months, wow, yeah, that's going quick. time flies. Well, good, glad you're here. Did you send Thank me a you. message? No. I didn't check my phone. No, so. I didn't. I, I called Kelsey, uh, and she was like, oh, we're doing the live chat today, so if you want to come. Yeah, show yeah, up. right on, right on. So, Hi. Okay, and yeah, uh, Nova, how's your yeah. day going? It's going good. Excellent. Going good. Excellent, excellent. Glad to have you here. Thanks. We're just talking about downsizing the conch, uh, nostril oh, jury yeah. to help see if something... Um, and then is it permanent if it stays there too long? It does. Now the thing is, is the nostril bumps are from sleeping on it, from getting towels, things like that caught on there. Um, or if you have the ring in there. So definitely go to the stud if that's the case. Downsizing shouldn't really make a bump go away too much on a nostril. Now a conch, if it's getting caught, if, you, if you're wearing masks, it, you know, that you definitely should downsize if it's way too long. So that's kind of the deal there, so. Um, yeah, what are you drinking today, buddy? Uh, I've got some green tea. Green tea. Oh, yeah. Right, cheers. 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 But yeah, definitely downsized conches. I have gotten uh, conches caught on all kinds of stuff, and uh, yeah, they, they can also wiggle, um, yeah. which can cause irritation. So. Yep. So, all right. Cool. So good to have company here. So yeah, how long have we been going at this here? It says, uh, do you see the time? I started right 11, so about 50 minutes in. Nice. Now we're going to go about another an hour and 10 minutes here, so. Cool. Um, Michelle, uh, Ubler. Fish fry. Okay. I got a job at a fish fry place for the winter, and they're cool with my facial piercings. That Love is it. amazing. Um, the thing is, is after the whole COVID thing, it seems like uh, once we took our masks off, jobs have become more accepting of piercings because... Well, yeah, they like didn't know, and they're like, "Oh, well, this person's been such a good worker, and they have a giant septum ring." So you can't just fire him <laughs> for that. So it's getting much, much better, and I'm really, really glad to hear that you're able to do that. So I also good. one of the few things I miss about the East Coast is fish is the fish fries. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Every like year during Easter season, all the churches around do fish fries. And, awesome. Uh, yeah, they're always good. See, I remember growing up and going to the the campgrounds, and we had this bunch of group of friends, and everyone would do fishing during the week, and we'd have a fish fry, 
like every Friday or something like that. And mm -hmm. it was just a, and it was kind of a big potluck thing. And that's yeah, awesome. It was it was pretty good, pretty good. And Karina Castaneda. Uh, I was pierced with a 14 gauge and need to go to a 12 gauge. Just wondering if it's fine to use my 12 gauge cheek jewelry to stretch with. Um, I'm not sure what piercing we're talking about. Definitely important. But the right length is a huge, huge factor. If it's way too long, it's going to be moving. When you do a fresh pier or fresh stretch, sometimes crusties happen again, and you don't want to pull crusties through something that tight. So um, make sure it's the right length. That would be that would be my thing. So, and Karsten Crossley says, "Is it good if my piercer is an APP piercer? I have implant grade titanium jewelry for my septum." Um, Yes. Now, the thing about APP is it doesn't say anything about the ability to do the piercing. It says that they're following the safety protocols, you know, for everything to be clean and safe for you and that they're using good quality jewelry. So that's what it means. I've seen crooked piercings come from APP piercings. It doesn't mean that we're going to do a straight piercing. And it's personality. You know, if you're not comfortable with that person and they're a jerk, you're like, oh, but they're an APP member. No, mm -hmm. no, find someone you're comfortable with. Um, it's a good start. I'm not saying it's bad. Agreed. But every piercer is different. Agreed. Silky Mornston. Okay, says, uh, hi, Scott. I got my snake bites done in like mid-June, and I'm experiencing like some tissue um, around the hole and on the inside of my mouth. Did I get, I did get the bars downsized, so I'm not sure what's wrong. Um, snake went down Okay, um, snake bites or lip piercings, and uh, sometimes you get like skin tags on the inside of your piercing. Um, if they're slightly different angles, like not completely perpendicular, sometimes the tissue just grows. Um, a lot of times it goes away with time. So if you downsize too much and it's pinching too much, maybe go to a slightly longer bar. Um, sometimes if you play with them all the time, that can cause those bumps to happen. Um, it's nothing bad if you took those piercings out the bumps are probably going to go away pretty darn quick um have you ever had lip piercings nope yeah oh, never God. had oral piercings i i fiddle with them constantly i have a horrible oral fixation so gotcha gotcha yeah. so yeah uh not a big deal not a big deal just try not to play with them and uh make sure it's the right size bar but yeah sometimes that does happen even on a fully healed piercing like everything will look good and you just got a skin tag on the inside and, and then People don't ever come back saying it won't go away because yep. I think they just go away. I'm in Australia. All right. A, Karsten Crossley says, I'm in Australia. I think that's a follow-up to the, uh, the I said we're, yep, okay. Is that, uh, is, I, I don't know if they're in Brisbane, but uh, Opal Heart or uh, Joltron, he owns a couple places yeah, in Australia. Yeah, so, Joel, Joltron's an awesome. Yeah, um, he's awesome. I love that dude. And I know you guys just had your first it's not APP. It's called yeah, something like the else. Australian APP. The Australian yeah. APP conference, and I remember seeing some footage on uh, Instagram stuff. That was pretty cool. So, congratulations on that. Moving on up. Oh yeah. And uh, Ursula's odds and sods. I just got a free sample of emu oil from Body Art Forms, and I'm really loving it. Is there such thing as using too much emu oil in a day? <laughs> Is it okay to use it on wood jewelry? Yeah, I imagine it would be. Um, <laughs> that's a good question. I've never used it as like an oil for my actual plugs, but I always used emu oil on my ear lobes and then slid it on. So it should be fine. So, yeah. And uh, here, what do we got? Uh oh, Keegan. <laughs> <laughs> Thoughts on piercing ears at a large gauge versus stretching from standard? Thank you, thank you, thank you for asking this question. Um, because this is something I, I've been struggling with at my shop. Um, and I love piercing larger gauge stuff, but I don't like doing it for the wrong reasons. Um, what I mean by that is a lot of people are like, oh, I want to save a couple dollars and I'm just going to pierce big right away. And the thing is, is if you don't have any other piercings, any other extreme mods, things like that, you don't know what you're getting yourself into. This is going to leave a huge scar on your ear. It's not as likely to close up. It's a permanent thing. Yep. And 
I don't like doing this. And like, if you come in and you have an eyebrow piercing, a couple helix piercings that pierced your nipples, and you have a septum piercing, and you're like, hey, I want to go big on my earlobes. Okay, I'll consider it. But if you have zero piercings and like, I want a zero gauge, you know, because I saw your video, <laughs> and it's like, ah, it, it's you got to walk before you can run, Agreed. you know. And maybe this is right for some people, but it's better. I think you used the analogy of like the first tattoo that you get shouldn't be like on your throat. Yeah. Uh, or on your face or something like that. Yeah. Um, Cause you may not understand like the implications that come along with it. Um, so having, having a few piercings healed, knowing what the experience is like developing a relationship with the piercer, I think is important. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's, that's what it's all about, you know, and it's, I like doing them, but I also care a lot and I don't want someone to have a bad experience or have really huge scarred ears in the future for something I should have stopped. Mm -hmm. You know, piercers need to have morals and ethics and draw the line in the sand sometimes. And that's where a lot of piercers are like, I don't feel comfortable piercing minors. I don't feel comfortable piercing babies. I don't feel comfortable piercing. I don't pierce cheeks. I don't like to do them. So, you know, and it's like, if you feel strong about something, you should definitely do that. And it's, you're going to last longer in this community. You know, Great. people will respect you more. They may be upset at the moment in time, but there's a right and wrong way to go about this. And it's like, don't exploit it too much. So Agreed. Yeah. And I think that anyone that gets upset and never comes back to you is probably somebody that you don't want as a client anyway. That's yeah. a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. And, uh, Losses says retired senior citizens. What did I Is that miss? Follow up to something. So no. I'm, I'm gonna cool. scroll back up here. See what Losses <laughs> said last time to make it make more. Have you here seen we. any trends with the silver-haired group? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. I wrote it down because I was like, I don't know what the silver-haired group thing is. Um, retired senior citizens. Um, yeah, I'm definitely seeing more. More elderly getting pierced you know I've done several three generation piercings which I think is cool where it's grandma you know then mom and then the daughter or son or whoever it might be you know and it's uh it doesn't really matter and the thing is is I'm 48 years old you know so I'm pretty silver and uh <laughs> I'm not slowing down at all. And I started in 1993 and the first piercing studio opened in 1977. Technically it was 75, but I think the first storefront was 77. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, it's like that generation is getting to the senior age now. So they're not slowing down either. And it's like, the thing is, is the older you get, you realize I need to live my life. I've yep. always wanted a nose piercing. Mm -hmm. And I see that people like, I'm done worrying about what other people think or I'm retired and now I can finally have it. So so with that, yes, I do see a little bit more than I have in the past. And it's only gonna get more and more as the future goes on, as that generation, you know, where it's all generations. Because when I first started getting pierced, so 1975, yeah, they're they're, when I first started piercing in 1994, some of my older clients were maybe 30. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, I've never really looked at it that way, but as time goes on, it's, yeah, it's changing. For sure. Let's see if I can find that highlighted spot. I don't know where I'm at anymore. That's the very bottom. There we are. Okay. Yep. Hey, and you want to read a couple of these for me, dude? Uh, sure. Uh, this one's from Michaela Schaefer. Uh, the name is Joe. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Joe, Michaela Schaefer, uh, thoughts on hot compresses to treat piercing bumps. I've done two and my bumps are going down in size. Um, I love hot compresses for piercing bumps because ultimately, uh, in the beginning, a lot of it is, is built up fluid and the hot compress can, can help, help the fluid continue to drain, which is how you heal a piercing or anything for that matter. So I'm a fan. Absolutely. Yeah, we were talking about chamomile tea bags earlier, too. And, oh, cool. and sometimes having those things, you know, warm, too, because they're coming out of the hot water and you put it on there. It's kind of like a hot compress, even with the chamomile tea. But, yeah, the, the, yeah, the soaks actually really, uh, you know, hot compresses really do help. And it's the same thing as, like, back in the day, we used to do sea salt soaks. And the soaking was really good for the piercing. And bad because it wasn't mixed properly and it was a, a bad thing. So it was kind of like a, a win 
lose situation. Yep. Now we're using just the wound wash spray, so you're losing the soaking aspect. You're just wiping off what happens. So sometimes it's good to take that extra long hot shower. Mm -hmm. Or if you need to, like I said, if your piercing's irritated, you'll hear me say just soak in some warm water. Just stick your nose in that cup of water and let it drain. You know, let it do its do its thing. So absolutely. Yep. Tolof said, "Hey, hey, love watching the live streams. Do you have a favorite horror movie?" Good question. I would have to say, yes, I do. Um, I've always been a fan of the Nightmare on Elm Street series Great movie. because Freddy Krueger's just awesome. Yeah. Um, and then there was, so that would be like number two or three, I would say. That'd be number three. Number two would be Cabin in the Woods. If you haven't seen that one, it's the most so twisted ending I've ever seen of any movie. <laughs> and it's just pure chaos and you can't predict it. It's just, it's, true. it's amazing. So Cabin in the Woods, but... Ultimately, I mean, I just even hung it. I don't know if you can see this here. No, my microphone's in the way. I can move it to there. The best horror movie. Strange Land. <laughs> now, if you have not seen the movie Strange Land or know what Strange Land is and you're li you like piercings, imagine if you had the piercer slash tattoo artist go bad. This happens in the 90s, basically, and it's like it's when the internet first started happening, and he would invite people to some party or something on the internet, and this guy was half tattooed on his face, and the other half was all piercer, and he did rite of passage for people because that's moving from one stage of your life to the next, but he was forcing these extreme piercing ceremonies, you know, and amplifying piercings and apodravias and suspending people without their permission, um, and then the community comes down and looks on him as like this demon and i'm not going to tell you the whole story but it's about a piercer going really bad yep also starring d snyder from twisted sister <laughs> and he did all the research he actually got his septum pierced to understand what the movie was I all about i actually didn't know that yeah awesome. he did he did so mad respect to d snyder for doing this movie um I love D. Snyder. Yeah. D, if you ever see this and you're doing a sequel, I want to be a part of it. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for asking that. That was a great question. And uh, Chris oh, Grin. Yeah, Chris Grin. Uh, hey, Scott, what's the maximum amount of, amount of piercings that can be healing without issues at the same time? And could you elaborate on why to not go over the suggested limit? Yes. Um Generally, like four to five piercings healing at once is the most I like to see. That means your body still has, your immune system is still strong enough to heal those piercings. Now, it's kind of a weird number because if you only got earlobe piercings, earlobes are much more vascular, they're gonna heal much faster. It's a, a quicker, easier heal and you're still gonna be okay. But if you got like four helix piercings up on the top, it's gonna prolong the healing process and take longer because it, it just, there's not as much blood flow to the area. Mm -hmm. Now, if you start getting more than that, um, you're more likely to get sick because your immune system is being spread too thin to fight off the small germs and things that we're experiencing every day. Yep. So when that cold, or flu bug kind of hits you in the face, normally our immune system's just like, just like fighting these things off. Yep. But when they're all fighting other battles, bam, you just get sick. And yep. I can attest, I've been over pierced and over tattooed Same. multiple times and I do not learn my lesson. <laughs> I am now, cause I'm older and I'm wiser. But I, I bet like four or five times where I've got myself so sick where I've had to call into work and my boss even warned me, he's like, Scott, you're overdoing it, you're overdoing it, it's too much. I'm like, I can handle it. I'm taking multivitamins yep. and bam, I'm out. Yeah, so. for sure. Cause ultimately both piercings and tattooings are just wounds, yeah. you know? Um, and our bodies are, are trying to heal all of the individual wounds. Uh, eventually it just can't keep up. Um, I've done it, especially with tattooing, just like getting getting super overworked and being like dead the next couple of days, especially if, if like you try to work out or something after. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're knocked out. It's it's a lot. It really, really is. So, um, and that that's the reason why. I mean, you can do what you want. I've had I've told people like, hey, I'm not going to pierce you anymore. I've turned people down. I'm turning away money, you know, so you can heal your piercings. I want you to. And then they go to other shops, and then they come back and like, why is this all infected and irritated? I'm like, I you told you, 
you know, and it's so, it's unbelievable. But yeah, that's the reason why. Good question. And Chris K says, uh, is emu oil viable option on healing nipples? I've only done done saline spray so far, but it's about four months, and one of them got snagged a few weeks ago. Well, it's good if it's irritated, it's going to make it feel better. Um, and I do have pamphlets at my shop for the emu oil that says healing with emu oil. Um, I have never done this. I don't see why it wouldn't work. It. Now, when you use oils, I feel like it can attract more dust and debris and pull things like that in there. Um, but technically, it could work. I'm, I'm not saying it is good or it's bad. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But it'd be safer than a lot of the other things out there. It's true. Yeah. It's so. true. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've snagged nipple piercings before, and they've been angry for a month or longer. So definitely not an uncommon occurrence. I almost thought I'd rip mine off one time. Yeah. I hit a door so hard, and I remember spinning and falling and having to look. And I'm like, good, it's still attached. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've gotten them. Towels and loofahs have been my main <laughs> my main bad one. You're just, uh, yeah, I know what you mean by, like, I don't know if that's still in me. <laughs> yeah. Got to double check. And Chris Grin says, adding up to my other comment, um, if, if I'm at my piercing number limit, can I get a new piercing if the ones that are not 100% healed? Uh, so could I get a new piercing, like 90% healed? I mean, yes, it's going to slow down the healing process a little bit. Um, but, yeah, use your own judgment, you know, and it depends on what you're getting. If you're getting a really complicated piercing to heal, like if you want an industrial and you're borderline healed on the rest, I would say hold off on that. But if you're just getting like an eyebrow or a navel or something, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Just the extreme ones would be the ones where I'm like, you really want to be healed. For sure. Yeah. And you said, thank you. You are <laughs> very, very welcome. Thanks for being here and being a part of the community and asking awesome questions. Also, I'm going to say this right now because we're about uh, an hour and 10 minutes in. Hit the like and hit the subscribe. It makes a big difference. And like I said, next week, I don't believe we're going to be doing a live chat because I'm working more on getting the show put together. With this, I will be uh, announcing somewhere. I'll, I'll announce it. And uh, we're doing a new email account where you guys can send in video questions and then you'll be featured on the actual show that'll be um, fun so yeah so video questions and we can put some faces to some of these names too which would be kind of fun and then i'm going to do maybe something like scott on the strip where i go on the strip and talk to people we'll be doing some jewelry reviews and uh spotlights for some of the newer stuff uh and if you're a body piercing you're interested in being on the show hit me up um send me a message on the piercing with scott uh, Gmail. Um, yeah. And we'll see if we can set up some live chat stuff here and have you be part of the show. So it'd be pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. So, and uh, yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. It'll be fun. So, you know what? The other day, uh, Nova and I, I actually met Nova's roommate too. We went and smoked a cigar together. It was pretty yes, cool. Yes, we did. Was that your first cigar ever? Uh, it wasn't my first cigar ever. I've had a few in the past, but it was my first time at a cigar lounge. It was so, pretty cool, wasn't it? Yeah, they had a they had a harpist playing. I was, I was, was going to bring it up. Absolutely crushing it. Uh, yeah, he had. You're like, right. The stand up harp thing, and this guy was like Eddie Van Halen on the harp. It yeah, was truly. insane. <laughs> I would say Ingve Malmsteen, but yeah. not, not everyone knows who that is. But, true. And if you do, you'd be like on a harp. Yeah. Like, yes. Actually. Yeah. Yeah, he had this like sort of uh, Spanish influence. There was a lot of like. Which we, is something that Ingve does all the time, the sort of yeah. like harmonic minor. and uh, It was really impressive. I've never seen a harp player go to that caliber. It's true. So, yeah. so cool. So, uh, Malice Black Dagger. Conch cool was name. punched and then immediately stretched to a zero gauge. Woo! Damn. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you mentioned that he got his conch punched earlier. I'm like, what size? And yeah, zero. You know what? Try to stretch up to a. A zero gauge is almost impossible. Like my conch was pierced at a four and I tried to immediately stretch into a two. I tried to get into a zero. I did get the zero in, but it was never comfortable. So sometimes big sizes, you gotta go big like this. That's impressive. Yeah. Really, really impressive. For sure. 
Did you keep the uh, Did you keep the tissue that was punched? Yeah, it's called the cookie. Sometimes. Yeah. Some people eat those things. I've heard, I was just yeah. gonna say, did you Did you eat it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and um, this is I don't know what size the punch was. Most of the time, most piercers are gonna pierce and stretch, so it's probably like um, was it like an eight millimeter? Is that a zero gauge? I don't. I don't know. Maybe a six millimeter, somewhere around there. But normally you punch and stretch to minimize bleeding. Otherwise, there can be a lot of bleeding. Like if you see uh, my, my biopsy punch on my ear, I have a video on it, and it kind of explains right. how much you can bleed. So, yeah. But super, super impressive. Congratulations. And Michelle Scott, thank you so much. I'm new to watching your channel, but from what I've seen so far, I... It has helped me feel more comfortable with the process of getting my piercings. I appreciate you sharing with us. That's what this is all about. I remember like a while ago looking on YouTube and like there wasn't a good source of information. No one was making me feel comfortable. They're all horror stories. And it's <laughs> like, that's not what it's about. Like I'm a body piercer. I've been doing this just shy of 30 years. And it's the experiences in the room are nothing what you see on TikTok. It's true. You know, you look on TikTok, the horror things, like all the crazy bad things that, like, I've never experienced most of those things. Mm -hmm. You know, 30 years, when it's done properly, it's a safe, good experience. And if it wasn't, people wouldn't be returning. It's true. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So glad you found us. Thanks, Michelle. Um, and, uh, yeah, thanks for being a part of the community. Love having you here. Absolutely. I see you peeping. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi. Uh, hi, Scout. S Scout. <laughs> Scout Scott. Yeah. Shout out from uh, VK in Bulgaria. Whoa. Whoa. That's awesome. Super cool. All the way to the other side of the world. And uh, Danny Dracul. Hi, guys. What's up, Danny? And Yo. Mr. Monkberry. Go ahead and read this one. Um, guy with the septum pus here. I have a horseshoe, but I don't think it's infected because it doesn't hurt at all. Uh, should I do double flare or single flare and which materials? Okay, there's there's a bit to unpack here, I think. Okay, the, okay. he mentioned earlier that he's stretching a septum. I think he's okay. up to a three millimeter, if I remember right, okay. and that there's pus coming out of one side. And I Got was it. like, if you have a ring in there, the weight can be causing problems. Yep. The horseshoe, the circular barbell, you should be able to flip up inside your nose unless it hangs down too far. Yep. Um, and I would do either a single flare or just a straight straight plug. Yep. The double flare the, is going to get caught and it's going to be bad yep. news. No yes. double flares and septums. Wholeheartedly and, agree. And then also stay away from the silicone. Even though it's like you can squish and you can get it in there, the silicone is tacky and it is going to rip your nose apart. So, what's that? I think the doorbell rang. Oh, okay. Did you lock the door? I don't think so. Okay. I'm going to see who's at the door. Woo! -hoo. But yeah, um, so single flare is going to be your best bet. I didn't hear it. I have my uh, earphones in. And uh, Jay Pickett, first head cold with my septum. How do you keep it clean with your nose still running? Oh, it's so frustrating. The wound wash spray, you just you know spray it, keep those crusties off. It's the best thing you can possibly do. Um, when you got a cold, you got a cold. Um, antihistamines, I think. That'll minimize some of the, the crusties and, and so forth, so. And multi Steven, 1987. How long after a large gauge piercing does the bleeding stop? I got a large gauge piercing October 28th. And at work while picking up something heavy, straining my lobe started to bleed. Um, after. Sometimes you get it a couple days. Now the thing is, is it depends on how it was done. When you do a large gauge piercing, I do a pierce stretch, which means I pierce a size smaller and I immediately stretch up to that size to minimize bleeding because otherwise it's just going to be too loose and uh, you can have that bleeding. So if they didn't pierce and stretch, um, several days, several days. I see Kelsey over there chugging coffee. <laughs> I'm trying to mix it. Okay, okay. Um, you want to switch? Is there another... Uh, there's probably another rolling chair over in the other room if you want to pull that in. So, do it. Kelsey's here. Everyone, say hi to Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> you saw a little couple fingers there. So, 
Um, but yeah, uh, when you do large gauge piercings, sometimes it can be up to a week or so with bleeding. Yes, the, yeah. Is there? Yep, there we go. That one? Okay. She's good. Yep. All right. So we're going to have to kind of make room here. Kind of yeah, we'll scooch. scooch over a little bit. Cool. We're going to have to kind of share the mics. Hopefully the sound still sounds. Oh, yeah, that's fine. I'll pass it back and forth. I think yours is a little hotter than ours is. So. Okay, cool. Cool. Oh. There we go. Oh, you grabbed the weird chair. Oh, the other one's right there. You want that one? It might be smaller, fit in there better. So, yeah, grab that one. Sorry. We're live. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck it. We'll do it live. But yeah, expect probably a week or so of bleeding and whatnot. And Rebecca B, uh, is the Princess Albertina piercing unsafe? I've noticed that most shops offer gentle piercings, do not offer the Princess Albertina. 100%. Um, you want to talk about rare piercings? That would be the Princess Albertina. Now, the Princess Albertina is one that basically goes in the urethra and comes out the actual vagina. So it's pretty intense okay. now when you get this done first of all most people have to be into some sort of urethral play or stretching of the urethra where you can fit a receiving tube on the inside of the urethra to be able to pierce into it now the other thing is when you get this piercing done i think they say expect like two or three minimum utis during the healing process so i did not know all this actually <laughs> it's really 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 intense um and that's why most people don't offer it um there's a new younger generation who um, probably doesn't even know of this and it's probably eventually going to disappear and then probably show up another 20 years from now because like, oh, it's name. the new yeah. piercing, you know, <laughs> with a new name and be like, don't do it, you know. Um, it's extreme. It's as ex both as extreme as it can get. Yeah. So that's the reason why no one really offers it. Um, James, uh, who's one of the owners of Infinite Body Piercing out in Philadelphia, is I think is the originator of this piercing. He's the inventor That's of awesome. this one. So yeah. Wow. Yep. I so. wonder how many piercers do them. <laughs> Not yeah, a lot. You probably count. Not on, a lot. Count if, on two hands. Yeah. Yeah. So. So how's Kelsey doing today? I'm doing all right. All right. I'm super late, but. Oh my gosh. It's been a day. What did you bring to the table here? You can't see it. It's on a screen. <laughs> She's got some Starbucks. Uh -oh. I had no other choice. I okay. understand. There cheers. No, I'll still cheers. No cheers. Dutch cheers. On my way here from your house. <laughs> All right. So where can I put this? I hope everybody's having a great day. I'm having a really, really good day. That's good. We are having yeah. a good day here. It's Everyone's... been a long day, but it's it's a great day. So good. Good. Yeah. All right. Oh, wait, did everybody just cheers without me? Did we we, cheered you. Didn't I we cheer you? Oh, I, we cheers me. I'll, I'll double cheers. Oh, I'll double, double cheers. cheers. Okay, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> All right. The cat Jeff. is back. Jeff. Yes. Just Erica? Is that where we were? Oh, yeah. That's yes, you're right. We almost skipped. Oh, sorry, Just Erica. Um, I'm stretching my ear, and one of my ears have scar tissue on the inside from... Uh, inside from having my ears pierced with a gun as a child. Will this affect my how my ear stretches? Anything different I need to do? Okay, so when you get pierced with a piercing gun, people think that you need to take it out and get it re-pierced with a needle, and that is just going to create more scarring on top of it. Mm -hmm. Everyone has that scar tissue on the inside. That is what we call the fistula. It's like a tube of scar tissue. Sometimes people develop more. Sometimes people develop a little bit less. It's not a big deal. Everyone generally has this. So is it going to be anything different? You need, no. You should Honestly, be I, I feel most people who have stretched ears now, you know, including Probably myself, have, yeah. had our ears pierced with or by the gun. So, um, yeah, yeah, this one was um, the only thing that you I mean, would just need to be careful of is obviously just, you know, the normal rules of this is just to go size by size. Don't skip sizes. I'm super lucky that I have earlobes like I do because of how much I abused them while I was stretching. So, yeah. um, 
Yeah, but I mean, being pierced with a gun, it really doesn't make a difference. I mean, you might have an ear that's like, you know, the pain in the butt ear, and then the other one mm-hmm. that's just smooth sailing. So my my mm-hmm. right ear is my pain in the butt, and my left ear stretches like nothing. So yeah, yeah. And the and the yeah. thing is, is the only concern I would have is look close to your ears, make sure they're pierced symmetrically. Mm-hmm. If one's much higher, one's lower. Sometimes that starts showing up more once you start stretching it. Typically, for sense. for ear piercings, I go right smack dab in the middle of the actual earlobe, especially when someone, uh, you know, explains to me that they plan on stretching in the future. Um, so, you know, the lower the piercing, the more likely it is to be a very, you know, thin wear area on the bottom here. So if you look at my loves, mine are very thick and healthy. I was very lucky that mine Jealous. were pierced, like, right in the center of my lobes. I had really thick lobes always. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, right in the center. Um, yeah, it's been a lobes episode. We've been yeah. talking a lot about cool. it. And uh, someone cool. asked earlier about, like, I want to get to three inches. What's the best way to go? And it's like, Grab. take your time. Take your time. Um, yeah. Also having enough lobe there. I mean, even if you have small lobes, I've seen people go to four inches with, like, really thin lobes. Granted, they had to eventually get them, you know, uh, sewn back yep. up. And just, and I've but... seen people where they can't go past double zero, too. Yep. So, I mean, they just have very thin... everyone's different. Uh-huh. Everyone's different. So, an actual cat. Kelsey, do you want to start reading some of these? Uh huh. Hi, yeah. I got the nasling like two months ago. Ooh. It's still swollen. Oh, yeah. At this point, I'm wondering if it will ever go down. Wasn't that bad <laughs> getting it? But prepare for lots of headaches Ooh. next two to three weeks. Yeah, nasalings are one of those things where even I wouldn't get one just because I am terrified of that going through that, that cartilage, Ooh. the, the yeah. dense cartilage up top. Oh. So I don't perform them because I'm afraid of hurting people. Mm-hmm. And I'll do all the other piercings. There's the that risk one's of breaking scary. someone's nose. Um, you know, not really? supporting. Not yeah. I feel yeah. like not supporting the tissue. You know, properly. Okay. Okay. You know, is especially if you're pushing more with the needle than like you are with supporting the tissue. I feel like you could really just like that bone that's up there. I feel like yeah. you could break someone's nose pretty easy. I'm not. I mean, I don't know that cartilage. Makes my like sinuses hurt when I think yeah. about it. <laughs> yes. <And> so, <laughs> oh, um, it's still swollen at this point. I'm wondering if it will ever go down. Eventually, it will go down. Nasalings just take six months Forever. plus to yeah. heal. Um, downsize, you know, around the six month mark ish. Nostrils know, generally heal quick, but once if you went into some of that hard cartilage up top, that's worse than some of the cartilage in your ear, which can take over a year to heal. Oh yeah. Um, swelling's gonna go back and forth. Um, if the bar's way too long, maybe downsize it so it doesn't get as irritated, which can minimize some of the swelling. But but keep cleaning, and you gotta be patient. This uh-huh. is an extreme piercing. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And Lassa says, silver hair, you know, 60-plus oh, yeah. retired senior citizens. Absolutely. We're talking if there's more trends for some of the elderly to get getting pierced. And uh, hyper, is, hyper, hyper is too, too much, much, and hypo, hypo is. is thank you. Okay, thank you. Cool. We're talking about hypertonic and hypotonic okay. saline solutions because someone was saying if you add more, and I'm like, I wasn't sure if it's hyper or hypo. but okay, they, cool. So I knew someone would be able to correct me. Thank you, Lassa. Yes. Um, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, Definitely older generation. I mean, have you noticed any much difference in like, well, Kelsey, you've been piercing about 10 years. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed seeing older people coming in more or is it? Uh, Absolutely. Like, I mean, this is, this isn't one of those age things where it's only for young people. There really is no age limit to like just body modification in general. Um, Some people start later on in life. Um, I have one client in particular that has, you know, multiple piercings just started getting tattooed within the last you know 10 years and Mm -hmm. is almost fully covered head to toe um plans on coming back and uh getting more stuff done by me which is really cool um from sweden so that's awesome um yeah there's there's no really no age limit to it and as far i mean like more people older people coming in i want to say like the you know the uh the cougar generation is coming in for more stuff. And it's like, you know, the people want to sit there and say, oh, it's like a midlife crisis. No, like this is us like taking ourselves and like our identity is back. And that's, you know, it's a super power- powerful thing and it's awesome. So, you know, someone's like, oh, I've always wanted my nose pierced. But I'm like, oh, I don't know. I've got kids and, you know, like, uh, or like I'm a grandma. And it's like, it doesn't matter. You it, know, it's going to be awesome either way. In a way, it's almost like 
the gay community. Mm -hmm. Like, if you went back 20 years ago, it wasn't as socially accepted to be gay as it is now. Yep. And it's the same thing with piercings. It was such a shun back in the day. And now I think a lot of the elder generation is looking at it saying, it's it's okay to have these. Yep. Yeah. You they know? The freedom to mm -hmm. do it's that. Just, the yeah. freedom to do it, exactly. Yeah, so. Yeah. Pretty awesome, pretty awesome. And Rebecca B, how many body piercings do your regular clients have? Do you have any clients that have more piercings than you? Oh, I have so many clients that have way more piercings than me. <laughs> we have one particular regular that just gets a lot of stuff done, ends yeah. up taking stuff out and then getting something else done, gets old stuff put back in, you know. I don't know if I've ever met anyone personally who's had more piercings than me, mm -hmm. but I know a lot of people who have more piercings than mm -hmm. me. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I've Yeah, I used to have 16 just in my ears alone. Seven genital piercings, belly button, and 11 facial piercings. I've had well over 350 piercings oh with not including play piercings or suspensions or energy pulls. Okay. Yeah, that's not including that's wearing piercing or suspension jewelry. or energy. Yeah, that's just, okay. Wow. Damn. That's cool. I've that's been crazy. pierced a lot, and I love getting pierced. Yeah. Like, my eyebrows have been six times to maybe a dozen each time. Wow. Each nipple's been pierced six, seven, eight times. Oh, no. My throat's been pierced probably like six or seven times. I, it's just wow. everything's been pierced so over and over, and I just keep re rearranging. So mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. So I've never met anyone who has had more than me. I'm not saying they don't exist, but, Yeah. And I think the most I ever wore at one point in time was 27 piercings, but I've seen people with 40 to 50 in at once, which is a lot. That is a lot. It's a lot. That's a lot. So, cool. And then I see you peeping. Yeah, you're absolutely right. hyper too much, hypo too low. Thank you. <laughs> I think it's such, such a great... Bomb. Hi, Scott. Big fan here from India. I've been a piercer for a little more than a decade now. Your videos are super helpful. Would love to meet you sometime in Vegas in the near future. Thanks and cheers. That'd be cool that. to have you. That'd yeah, be awesome. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, so if you've been a piercer and you actually come to Vegas, let me know. Mm -hmm. I'll totally have you on my show. That would be awesome. Yeah, that'd be super fun. Yeah. I was, you know, that'd be really, really cool. And uh, if not, we can always like Skype. I'm planning on doing a bigger show where I'm actually going to Skype. And for those of you who are just kind of tuning in right now, eventually I'm going to be asking you guys for video chat questions where you actually send in a video and we'll like handpick the best questions for the actual show. So you could be featured on the show, which Ooh. could be kind of fun. That'd be fun. Could be yeah. kind of fun. So, but yeah, I'm um, looking forward to meeting you too. <laughs> and Ray. Thank you so much. I've followed your channel since the beginning. Yeah, you're one of the main piercers I trust, so it really means a lot that you took the time to help me. Thank thank you. Have an amazing day. Well, thank you very much, Ray. You're very welcome. I'm glad you're able to, you know, ask the right question, and I could actually help you out. That's really, really cool. And that's what this is all about for me. I mean, I never really put this out to, like, be a huge YouTube channel. I just wanted to have a good source of information. That's really what it is. So, you guys so much, deserve it. Yeah, there's so much conflicting information out there. It's There really is. It's awesome. Don't Google everything. <laughs> it's all a lie. All Rebecca right. B, my conch piercing is at a 16 gauge now. If I want to stretch it to a 6 gauge, how long would this take? I know cartilage is harder to stretch. So cartilage is definitely harder to stretch. Mm -hmm. Um but if it's, you push real hard, like three it, seconds? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. It's just, it's a little more painful than the, just soft tissue. Yep. Um, and it, it definitely takes a little while for it to heal to then go to the next size. Typically, I tell people six to eight weeks before your next stretch. Sometimes it's going to be four to six months before your next stretch. It really just kind of depends. Um, you definitely don't want to jump sizes on cartilage ever. Absolutely not. Yep. Um, I got an opinion here. Mm -hmm. um, if your conch is fully healed, start wearing the ring. The ring is going to move around a lot more. It's going to loosen up that hole, and it'll be a faster, easier stretch for you. Okay. So the studs don't stretch it out as fast as much as the mm -hmm. rings do in a situation like this. Because once it twists, the front of the hole and the back of the hole is slowly kind of stretching out. So you're actually, it might be a little rough to sleep on for a while, but I mean, that's going to be the easiest way to get it up to that larger size. And if it hurts too bad, don't do it. Yeah, go to the, just the next size stud. Not don't do it, but don't do it at that moment. Yeah. Wait until it's the right time. 
Yeah. Or just punch it. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, do do Jesse Jamerican. Hi Scott. Is there any numbing agent available for nipple piercings to ease the pain? So well, this um, question was for Scott. Sorry. Is is there anything? Yes, there is stuff. Do I suggest using it? No. no it You're psyching yourself bad. out. You've been pinched or probably bitten harder. It hurts, but it's tolerable. Go to a quality piercer and spend a couple extra dollars for that, and you're going to get a higher quality needle, someone with experience, and that's what's going to make it less painful. Way more smooth. Also, keep in mind, if you're trying to save some money, you go to a cheaper piercer, and like, well, if I numb it, you're going to have long-term pain because you have lower quality jewelry, and it might not be pierced properly where you're going to cause longer healing, which is more pain in the long run. So in general... There really isn't anything. You can do topical stuff, but topical stuff is not meant to be put inside the body, and that's what the needle will be doing. It'll be dragging it right inside. So mm -hmm. I make sure people have all that stuff wiped off beforehand, and it doesn't do that much. So Yeah, it really, it just kind of takes the edge in off. In your head. But yeah, it is definitely in your head. It is really not that bad. Um, again, the quality of needles make the biggest difference. P speaking from personal experience, first time I had mine done, um, I remember that it hurt bad enough to the point where I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to do the other one, but I did it because I was like, I don't want to just have one, mm -hmm. you know, but then I was like, well, if they ever come out, I probably don't ever want to get them again. But then recently, so I took them out because of my kids and trying to do the whole, you know, breastfeeding thing. And um, I put one back in and I wasn't able to get the other side back in, but I just recently used a Kiwami needle and just like slid it through where it was pierced the first time. And it didn't feel like much of anything. I felt like a little bit of like a pinch, like at the end when it was going through the rest of the way, but it was nothing. Needle technology Kiwami, is yeah. insane. Kiwami needle, oh my gosh. Yes. So if you're a piercer, um, you can order these things through Neo Metal. Order a sample pack. That's all you need to do, and you're gonna be sold. You're, yeah, and you're, you're gonna be, be like, "What? Well, why am I using these other needles?" They literally, I mean, they cut like just. It's anything. insane. It's, it's insane. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, it is. So, all right, and Karina Castadina. I have 14 gauge cheek piercings, and I want to go from a 14 to a 12. Can I just use 12 gauge cheek jewelry to stretch with? Do I need to push it through? Did we? Do I just push through? I would recommend just using a 12 gauge taper. It just makes it a lot more smooth. The, the the jump between a 14 and a 12 is so minuscule that you may not even really feel it, depending on how long you've had your cheeks pierced for. What's a taper? A taper is a tool that we use that either threads or push pins into the size of jewelry that you're going up to next. It helps you stretch up to that next size. Because it starts size. real thin and mm -hmm. goes it up to the thickness. It starts real thin and then yeah. it goes up to the thickness of the size that you're so going So it's not to. just a blunt shoving nope. it through. And, exactly. Yeah. It's yep. nice and smooth. It just makes it way easier. That way you're not, you know, irritating tissue. Yep. Trudy Miller. Hi, Scott. I hope all is well with you and the crew. Does your friend sell his artwork? The trippy art you have in your piercing room. Yes. Um, I believe his website is called the Strom Refinery, S-T-R-O-M. Um, you can find him on Instagram and Facebook. Both him and his wife do amazing paintings, Tom Strom and Jackie Strom, or Jackie Sandilands Strom, S-A-N-D-Y-L-A-N-D-S. -S. So, but look them up, they do sell stuff, they have prints, they sell original. Um, you go to their website and you're gonna be like, I can't believe some of these are paintings. It's unbelievable. I have some of the most talented True friends. Friendly. Yeah. Truly crazy. Yep. Yep, I have pictures in my room where people can't believe that they're actually paintings. Yeah. They thought they're actually pictures. I still it's... look at them and like from like a, even until you're like like this close to them, you're like, wait, that's what? a painting? <laughs> that's insane. Yeah. It's yep. insane. They're beautiful. So Jackie Sandilands Strom or Tom Strom. Mm -hmm. They're both tattoo artists too, and I believe they're in Virginia right now. One day. Yeah. One day. I'm <laughs> yeah. gonna I will. Did I miss one? Yeah, I did. Tide Pup. I've been conflict I've I've seen conflicting info. Is there any issue healing multiple piercings at once given proper aftercare? And if so, what is the maximum amount of the time that you would recommend? 
This is the other second popular thing we're talking mm -hmm. about today is how many piercings you can heal at once. Mm -hmm. yep. I say four to five, mm -hmm. but it also kind of depends on what piercings they are and where they are in the body exactly. and the healing time. Um, anything more than this, your immune system is weakened and you're more prone to getting sick. Can you still heal them and heal them without getting sick? It's possible, but you're more prone to have problems and you're more prone to get wiped out with the cold or the flu. Mm -hmm. So, um, maximum amount of time I'd recommend. It depends, you know, because like earlobes are, what, six to eight weeks they could be healed up in. Um, sometimes it's several months. Cartilage can be years. Four some, to six months, yeah. a couple of years. Mm -hmm. You know, so. it, it really varies on how your piercings are doing. But if you can't seem to be heal your Sorry. piercings up, getting new ones isn't gonna make the situation better. Mm -mm. So, but yeah, I don't like to do more than three in one sitting, but I don't like to have more than four or five healing on a person at once. Uh, another big thing is if you're an ear sleeper like myself, you know, you would start with multiple piercings on one ear. I mean, lobes, not too much of a big deal. If you do sleep on one side more than the other, you'll notice that the one side will take a little bit longer to heal than the other side um, that you're not laying on. Um, but yeah, multiple ear piercings, like, you know, people want to do like, you know, multiple in each helix. I would rather start with one side, let that heal four to six months yep. to a full year, and then start on the other side. It would just be considered an ear project at that point. Mm -hmm. I'm an extremely balanced, symmetrical person, and that's what I would do is I wouldn't do both ears at the same time. I do one and wait till it heals up, even though it's like it drives me nuts that I'm not symmetrical. Right. But, but it's I promise like, it is so worth the wait instead of it. having to take it out halfway through because it's healing crooked and whatever else. So Alrighty. And uh I show I show. Before I got into the whole piercing thing, I thought of those with piercings as tough and reckless. <laughs> We're rebels. But no, many are scared of pain and worried about the little bumps. Thanks for helping us, Scott. <laughs> it's true. I uh, I have a piercer friend who, he's like one of the toughest dudes I know. He's like <laughs> big, strong dude, face tattoos, was a bouncer for a while, uh, rides like a, a, a Harley. And uh, when he's going to get blood drawn, he literally is like sobbing. Like, <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Uh, I love it. I love it so much. I've seen yeah. it many, many a times. Yeah. Mm hmm it's definitely, um, and you know, some people are tough, some people are not, but we can all take it. It's just a psychological thing. Mm -hmm. It's, it doesn't the make anxiety. me physically stronger. It makes mm -hmm. me mentally stronger and it yeah. makes me feel better about myself, which is the way I'm going to present myself. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a pretty amazing, magical thing, what it does to us. Mm -hmm. You know, people are like, aren't you embarrassed about having all that jewelry in your nose? Like, I'd feel weird going on public with, without, without it, it. and yeah. it's like i feel better like check this out you know yeah. exactly so yeah yep. i'm from the netherlands larissa simmons from the netherlands that's pretty cool mm -hmm. and malice black dagger uh my so bad the conch was six gauge they had it punched I think so, yeah. Or, wow. or they were trying to stretch it up to that. I don't know. I might be getting my wires crossed. I think we were talking about this. I'm thinking of the step. I'm getting things mixed up. I think it was punched at a six and stretched to zero, maybe? Or it's at the... Anyways, the conch is a six <laughs> gauge. All right, Malice, thanks. Mm -hmm. Trudy Miller, is there a limit to how many people you can mentor for a piercing apprenticeship? And have you ever thought about opening a piercing school? Wow, awesome a question. question. Um, a piercing school? No, I would. I Can't personally do wouldn't do it. It can be done. You can do seminars, but calling it a school, I think, is kind of wrong because you're going to be leaving with a degree, you know. Uh, and I, I, I'll sit here and say, not everyone is meant to be a piercer. Not just anyone can become a piercer. Um, I mean, you can definitely train someone, but if someone just doesn't get it, you know, along the lines of bevel theory, sizes, why we do this and we don't do that. You know, some people think that it's literally just like, you know, throwing a dart and like, you know, you get your piercing and it's like, it's, it's a lot, there's a lot more to it than people think. So problem if, solving for aftercare right? health, mm -hmm. you Everything. have like the artistic aspect of what's right. going to look yeah. right, like the exactly. proper placement. Anatomy, the right... people having proper anatomy for everything, just the it's yeah you know Anyone some, some people do are just die hard and want to be this so bad i personally have wanted to be a piercer as for as long as i can remember since i was a kid and uh 
And I'm super lucky and grateful that I, I am where I am today because I get to wake up and go to work and do what I love for a living. Um, some people think that, you know, it's a cool thing, you know, where it's like, yeah, I'm a piercer. I've got, you know, all these cool points. I'm a freaking dork. Like, <laughs> I don't know what is so cool <laughs> about my job or like who I am. I mean, I look cool and I think I look cool. At least I think I look cool. Some people probably think I'm a, a freak of nature, but you know, that's, you know, I, I feel like a majority of piercers yeah. are more on the darkier side. Yeah. You know, like yeah. I'm trying or to think like juniors. back to high school and it's like <laughs> some of the coolest kids, did they become piercers or was it mm -hmm. the, like, is the weirdos in the background? I, I it always, was the weirdos yeah. sitting in the back. Yeah. I, mean. I, I always yeah. say that like the like conference is just like all the kids that sat at the weird table. Yes. Like, <laughs> the artsy kids. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yep. yep. So, um, but no, I, um, I also have an opinion on the, the, concept of a piercing school i i think that it's an it's kind of an impossibility because like a piercing apprenticeship has to be learned on the job i think it has to be like yes a absolutely apprentice journeyman mm -hmm. concept because it's like you can take as many classes as you want but if you're not looking at anatomy or if you're not doing piercings then there's no way that, there's no amount right. of like information majority of learning learn. how to pierce is a hands-on like thing there's yep. a there's a big difference between schools and seminars mm -hmm. and yeah. classes Agreed. you take. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Like the APP offers a lot of classes and, uh, and I've done like the Fakir intensives, which is, I think they technically call it a school, but they also say this is not an apprenticeship. Yep. This is just right. a little just general just knowledge, general I, knowledge. And it's things. just a super long. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's tough. To get a school, it's really, really tough to come out with some quality stuff. Now, and is there a limit on how many people you can mentor for piercing for an apprenticeship? Probably. Um, I'm not sure in this state, but I know that it's a minimum of six months. I don't. I, I can't even imagine how many apprenticing people? more than one person at a time. I, I just I would want to dedicate my full attention to this person and have just this one person have their full attention to me and what I'm teaching them. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's super important, just a one-on-one -on -one thing, you know, multiple yeah. people and trying to focus on multiple people. That's why I don't, so there's uh, out here, you know, like tattoo artists and now per permanent makeup artists and everything. And now a lot of permanent makeup artists are doing this thing where because it's the same licensing, they just buy everything to pierce because legally they, they're allowed to, even though none of them went through an apprenticeship. And now a lot of them are yeah. starting piercing schools and piercing classes. Permanent yeah. makeup artists are not body piercers. I will just say that flat out right now. So if you see that and you see someone is like advertising that, you know, there's piercing school and you can take these classes, I would not hire you to be a piercer in my studio or to work like I would not, you know, let Scott sit here and be like, oh, yeah. you know, you did these classes. You can come and work for us. There is no way, no way possible. Yeah. Yep. You don't know anything about now, piercing. As far as how many people I would mentor for an apprenticeship, I was just thinking about this as Kelsey was speaking and it would only be one. Yeah, mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to because the thing is, mm -hmm. is when you're apprenticing, like I can't have a bunch of people in the room for your private piercing. Right. How awkward is that going to be if I have exactly. a group of people with us when I say you can only bring one or two other people with you and but mm -hmm. yet I have three people Five in the people room with, or whatever, you know, so yeah. so one at a time. And then number two is like there's a lot of things you're doing during your apprenticeship, which you may not think you're learning, you know, they call it the groundwork, but you're cleaning tools, you're packaging things, you're, you know, going over aftercares. <sighs> but I only have so much work for one apprentice at a time. Now I can't have, you know, you're getting half the apprenticeship if it's like, okay, this half you're, you know, first half of the day you're doing the setups, the second half you're doing mm -hmm. setups, second half, you know, you're doing aftercares, you're doing these aftercares, that, it just doesn't work and everyone learns at a different rate. So I would say one-on-one -on -one is the best. Absolutely. Maybe yeah. two. But I doubt it. It's not yeah. for me. I would it depends only on how many people you're also learning from. You know, it's like, but even then, like two people being apprenticed at once is that's pushing it. The only you know? way I could see it is if like one of the apprentices was almost a piercer and was like helping the other apprentice. But even then, I think one on one makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, like some people charge like five to ten thousand dollars for an apprenticeship, and if I had four of them, that's like twenty thousand dollars in my pocket, though. But that's insane. No, yeah, it's not <laughs> you even. You see what the I money. did there? Yeah. yeah. No. Nope. So it's it's yeah. it's not about making the money, and like there are a lot of piercers out here that would just charge you 
a, a crazy amount of money to teach you the basics and then just let you go on your way. And then you're not even getting and the basics. And you're, you're not going to get hired at now. any reputable studio yeah. whatsoever. And then you just wasted your money and wasted your time because majority of, if, if you said that, you know, you just went through a six month apprenticeship at whatever shop it was down, whatever, and you paid whatever for your apprenticeship, I would have to then reteach you everything from start to finish. You wouldn't be touching anyone. You wouldn't be, you know, Nothing. For you to get a job at my shop, I have to watch you physically do a piercing. Mm -hmm. And if you just got out of an apprenticeship and you're fumbling around in the room, you're not getting hired. No. You need experience. Just doesn't, yeah, it doesn't work that way. And Malice, Black Dagger, says zero mm -hmm. is insane. For a conch piercing, zero is pretty insane. Pretty I great. think the biggest I've ever seen is three-fourths of an inch plug in a conch. Mm -hmm. It was just... I've seen woo. the whole conch removed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've seen that too. But yeah. I, yeah, as far as I feel like we need our conch for a reason, though. You know, I don't understand. It catches the whole sound. Yeah. Yeah, it catches like, sound. I feel like when you push your ears back, you hear a lot less, but then you let go and it's amplified. Like try it. You know, like push push your ears. I have back. ear stuff in right now, oh, yeah, so you I have can't. Ear stuff. Yeah. But if you push, yeah, push your ears back. Neat. It's weird. Yeah. 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 We need our conscience for a reason. <laughs> Just Erica. Do you know of a cruelty free option to? Emulate oil. I think it's, I'm thinking it's supposed to be the oil. emu oil. Um, um, I have a two are, cents. There, there are, is but I don't recommend. Yeah, I bought it. It's it. called Grimu oil, and it's supposed to be the same thing. But when I looked at it and read all the ingredients, it's just a whole bunch of essential oils, the same thing as everything else that's being sold on Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, I tried it. It didn't do the same thing. It's something completely different. Um, there is no cruelty-free option to eat to the emu oil. It's not vegan friendly, um, but it's the only oil I know that works that way. Uh, yeah, most other essential oils and things like that people put on there is aromatherapy. It's not medical grade. It's not meant to go inside the body. It never has been, but because people see, oh, it has antibacterial properties. It has healing properties. It has, uh, okay, maybe like put a little scent around here and maybe that can help overall, but don't put it inside your body. So I'm sorry, I you, you can try it if you want. Like I said, it's Grimu oil, not Emu oil, and I bought it on Amazon, but it didn't do anything for me. So, Jesse Jamerican. I wanted to get my Tragus Pierce and use headphones a lot, so I thought Surface Tragus would be better. What type of jewelry can I use? Because I can break out easily by some jewelry. Titanium. Um, titanium uh, is always the way to go. I have only met in the last 10 years maybe one person who I believed was allergic to it. Um, and yeah, just the most sensitive skin I've ever seen in my life. Now, here's the thing is the surface piercing, the surface tragus is really, really tough to heal. The chance of it rejecting and having a huge scar is much, much higher. Make now, sure purse. You get the staple shaped jewelry. It looks just like this. And yeah. You get two tops that screw on each end. Well, I never get it pierced with a curved barbell. I'm going to suggest just getting the tragus pierced. Mm -hmm. Use over the ear earphones until your piercing's mm -hmm. healed. Once you downsize the stud, then you can wear normal earphones again. But you just got to wear like the ear earbuds, anything that goes in your ear, you need to abstain until your piercing's healed. So probably like four to six months minimum before you start wearing those types of things. But in the meantime, just wear the over the ear earphones. The surface piercing's probably gonna reject. They're really hard to heal. Indeed. Yep. Jelly pub, I like a name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll read this one. Uh, I wanna get my eyebrows pierced, placement being in the middle of the brow. I've become hesitant after finding out eyebrows are often rejected. Advice, tips to keep the piercing, and does placement matter? Um, I would say the most important thing about the eyebrow piercings would be anatomy. Yep. If you have a very flat brow, like I do, uh, where I don't really have much, much tissue to grab onto, as opposed to Scott, where I can literally pinch and pull all that tissue away, um, his brows are, are nice and flat and not so rounded. So, yeah, oh, you too. You've got some good brow. Oh, you do? Uh-huh. Yeah. I yeah. do not. <laughs> Actually, not, like, in the center, not as much. And, like, here, not mm -hmm. as much. But, so, yeah, placement does matter uh, yeah. depending when on the When you go anatomy. further in, the tissue does get more tight. It also depends on how close your bone is to that skin. You notice it's a little bit thicker on the outside as opposed to the inside. So, mm -hmm. um yeah, the thing is, is I've had about a dozen eyebrows on each side. 
Uh, I've had probably like four to six on each side reject out, even though I have great tissue for it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I have a feeling it's probably irritation from sleeping on it, getting caught, and that's all it does, and, and it causes it to reject out. Um, also, I've had way better luck switching over to titanium. The weight is a huge factor. Um, last time I had my eyebrows pierced, I actually had them pierced with solid gold barbells, and it looked awesome, but I couldn't get them to heal. And after about a month and a half, I was like, let's put titanium in the middle with just gold beads on the top and bottom. Mm -hmm. Everything just healed up almost immediately. Perfect. Yep. yep. So. Alice Durrell. Hey, Scott, do you happen to know of a good place to go for piercing near Somerville, South Carolina? I don't know where Somerville is. I am not 100% sure, but I can ask. I'm not 100% sure either. Yeah. For South Supposed Carolina. To. I would look up, um, you know, uh, look up a piercing forum if you have Facebook or anything. Um, or uh, go on to Facebook and there is a, a page on there called Ask a Professional Piercer. You are allowed to post in there as a piercee and uh, ask if there is anyone reputable near your area. And there are several different piercers on that Great that idea. can answer. So Ask a Professional Piercer is one of the best piercing forums that's really out there as far as just general basic information. If you just have like a quick question or something, um, very knowledgeable people yeah. running that Good. page. It was part of my apprenticeship to be in ingratiated in that group. So mm -hmm. yeah, it, it really was helpful. Cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jesse Jamerican says, what type of jewelry is best for the surface tragus so it doesn't look loose or hanging? Do not get the curved barbell. Like Kelsey was saying, you have to get a surface barbell. I use flattened out bars on the inside and then like they just, they have little discs on the top and bottom. Don't make sure you get something that sits flat to your face. Don't get like prongs or beads that can move around because the more they move around, the better chance of it is to rejecting out. Um, a good quality reputable shop is gonna be able to have those surface bars for you. Oh, and uh, for, I'm not exactly sure how far from Somerville this is, but uh, I know um, a couple piercers at Heat Street um, in South Carolina. It looks like it's about 16 miles. Uh, you can go see Jadia there. She's awesome. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. Um, Malice Black Dagger, I had to look up the sizes. It's been so long. Awesome. And then Larissa Simmons. So I've got nine nine ear piercings within one year. They all have and had problems. They start bleeding from time to time. Even my three low piercings got infected. Yeah, it just sounds like you need to only heal a few at a time mm -hmm. uh, before you get multiples. So nine is definitely a lot, especially in one area. It's just going to be irritated for a if while. If that is on one spot, yeah. too, it could be five and four on each mm -hmm. ear thinking it's, you know, and then the immune system spread out even more. Mm -hmm. So it also depends on jewelry also. So if you've got jewelry in there that isn't the greatest, I would maybe consider switching to flat backs with something just basic on the front just for majority of the healing tagger. process. Yeah. Uh, Malice Black Dagger, four millimeter is a six gauge, right? I want to say yes. I'm looking it up. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> we only four, know. 4.1. <laughs> we got only a only little conversion chart thing here just in case. Thanks, safe products. Silently judging you. Is that thing behind your ear the Mark Rom Berserk? Uh, I think that's uh, from, it's like a sigil from the anime Berserk. I, Which, think, I think he's talking about the tattoo behind your ear. Oh, um, it's a symbol for a lot of things. Uh, yeah, they, Berserk took a lot of like symbols from... Uh, no, that's not what it is. Yeah. Now, what I got this from is the symbol on the back, right behind my ear here, is there's a book called Modern Primitives made by yeah. Research. And in that book, there was a whole bunch of different, like mini chapters on different things. And one spot was a branding section because I think, uh, I don't remember, they're talking about all the different shapes people branded. And this was like a ruin for protection. Yeah. Now the ruin is just real simple lines, but being it wasn't gonna be branded, it was gonna be tattooed. And I got this done in the 90s, I made it more tribal-esque. So it's a more of a tribal-esque design of that rune symbol. I've had multiple, multiple Will people come up to me um, saying that it's this, 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 and this? Um, sure, if that's what makes you happy, yeah. But it was just a general symbol for protection, and I think I had that done in '94. Wow, a long yeah. time ago. I think it was the year yeah. my little brother was born. Crazy, Same. nice. Same, yeah. actually. Uh, I'm a '94 baby too. But yeah, um, I I believe that Berserk took a lot of uh, the sigils and stuff. I've actually never seen it, but I know of it. 
Uh, they took a lot of the sigils from like old, uh, old like pagan runes and stuff like that. Cool, cool. Yeah. So that it probably could be then it's tied in somehow. All right, so we have about five minutes left. We're gonna go. There's uh, several questions, so we're kind of going to the lightning round here. Mm -hmm. Let's try to make our answers a little bit faster. Awesome. It's so hard for us to do because we like to talk. It's we true. really do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Katie Brindell, hey Scott, love seeing you live. I'm excited for an event coming up, and I'm replacing a few pieces on my ear. Any advice on mixing metals and gems? Um, that's more of a personal thing. It really depends on what you like. Uh, I love mixed metal looks. I like the mixture of both rose and yellow gold. Um, but if you're more of a silver person, just titanium. Maybe throw some color in there. Some yeah. Colored yep. gems. Yep. And I'm keep the other way around. I like one metal, one stone. Like. Yep. Yeah. Keeping it. Oh yeah. Yeah, 14 so, karat yellow with yeah, some white all, opals. All yellow, all white opals. For and them. I'm about one color metal, different materials. Whether it's wood glass, mm -hmm. you know, and otherwise it's going to be the gold plugs in there, cool. but I like, yeah, so that's me. And with the different materials, you can get away with different colors and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, mixed metals, the only way I like it is if it's kind of universal, you know, not just having like one mixed metal here and one here, and then the rest is all something else. Right. I think it needs to be mixed in order for it to work for me. Right. But I'm not wearing it. Yeah. Yep. Whatever you like. Exactly. Larissa Simmons, I, uh, I clean room. them two times oh. a day. My piercer said I have to ice my ear. My helix said I have a year, has a bump on the back. Don't know why it doesn't go away. Oh, if I said it healed and better. The nine um, piercings. So I don't recommend icing piercings. Um, we need the blood flow in order to heal these piercings. So if you're constantly icing them, you're kind of slowing down the healing process. Um, I mean, uh, I see after a year, it's not going to make a yeah, difference. It doesn't make a difference after a year. I would try um, a silicone disc. Yeah, you can like one of those no pull disc. discs. Um, also, if you're sleeping on that side, that could be a big reason as to why you're having issues healing. You know, these piercings on the one side, if it's one side more than the other, but. Yeah. Those no pull discs is a silicone disc you put on the backside of, and it puts pressure on the bump. And a lot of times, wearing this for a good month or so will get rid of a lot of bumps and things like that. Yeah. Um, but you also got to look at the source of the problem. Are you sleeping on it, like Kelsey says? Are you bumping and hitting it? Is it hair product? Is it your aftercare regimen? Also, Are you cleaning it too much? Yeah, she Not also an... said she had nine done at the same time. So. Yeah, so that that's also. So I would say the silicone disc might be your best answer. Mm -hmm. Crystal Hammond, is it quite common for the third ear lobes? To have sensitivities while healing after two weeks. I managed to find earrings that are flat at the front to stop the snagging because they kept snagging, hurting with the studs that they were pierced with and even the sleepers we tried. Um, so I, after two weeks, yes. don't recommend switching your jewelry out unless it's like mandatory. I always do recommend something with a nice, comfortable flat back, something basic on the front just for the healing process if you're having issues. The higher you go up on your lobes, the longer they're going to take to heal because that is the area that you are getting closer <laughs> to your cartilage. I always tell people that the mid ear area is like the most common as far as just problems, prolonged healing process, everything. It's just a very sensitive area of the ear. It's also the part of your ear that you lay on as it's, soon as you sleep or as soon as you lay down on it. So yeah. it's so funny. If you went back about an hour, I answered almost word for word what you just said. Cool. So it. there must be some truth to that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh -huh. Look at that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alice Dor Durrell. Two Hi everyone. Faces. Two new faces since I came Hi. in. Hello. Yes. <laughs> We got Nova and Kelsey joining us today. Um, yes. Only a couple more minutes here. We're going to get through the last awesome. couple questions. I'm only judging you. How long should someone wait to get a snug redone? Would I be crazy to try again? I found a crusty wound on the back of the ear. That's why I took it out. Um, crustiness and everything is normal when it comes to healing the piercing. Uh, the snug is very difficult. Uh, to on heal. the back really of the ear. Time. That oh, means the they probably the went too deep. They could have yeah. gone way too deep. Yeah. So, so um, or it was, it started to get a little bit of an infection or something. A lot of times yeah. it will create like a, a wound nowhere near the actual entrance or exit of the piercing site itself, um, just to create a spot to drain, you know, so you got to be cautious of that. But yeah. yeah. And it might not be a bad idea to maybe talk to a couple other piercers and ask them, show them the scar tissue. Like, was this pierced too deep or is this, you know, just get some other opinions. Normally, I say a minimum of a month before you get something re pierced. Mm -hmm. Something like this is going to take way longer About than four that. Four to six months. Yeah. So yeah. It's fully Massage it, break it down, try. make it look as normal as possible. Yeah. Yep. 
Uh, Zalima Zahir, I have small slits behind my ear, like where the ear meets the neck. Uh, it's been over seven years and I miss them so much just to put even more emphasis on stretching them right away. Yeah, I think maybe she uh, stretched too fast and had issues or something along those lines. Or okay. kind of create yeah. like a little fold on the back of the ear, which I yeah. have seen. I don't know if that's really controllable there either. Yeah. So. Uh, also, hi, Kelsey. Glad you're having a good day. <laughs> Yay! Thanks for joining us. Um, just just Erica. Erica. Yes, so far my pain my pain in the butt ear is the one with the scar tissue. <laughs> ah, that, nuts. That checks out. Yeah, checks always. out for sure. Um, Shauna M. Rogers, <laughs> great movie, Strange Land. Yes, it yeah. is. It really is. <laughs> I was crossing the abyss. Crossing the abyss. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Someone Mom, asked Mom, earlier Mom. what my favorite horror movie was. Yeah, and yeah, and Biggs so. Pierce was like really scary. But. It, does. <laughs> it does, but it's so awesome. Captain Howdy. Yeah, it's the yes, character's sir. name in on that one. So. Mm -hmm. Michaela Schaefer, the name is Joe. I want to get angel fangs. Will I still be able to play clarinet? Ooh, that's a good question. That's actually tough. I would. That's say... going to be rough for the healing process. I would wait yep. until, uh, like, you're if you're in school still, um, and that's what you're talking about. You take, you know, uh, woodwinds. Isn't that more like the tongue instead of the it's mouth? It's more the shape? tongue, it's, but it is. You still you're, making yeah, the. You're going, you are. It's okay. like yeah. Yeah. I played the um, clarinet for six years, believe wow, it or not. Okay. I know. <laughs> so if they got them pierced a little further out than normal, it would still probably be painful. It would still you're be making, so. Yeah, you're making a hard pucker face like the whole time. Okay. Yeah, really. I mean, I mean, really, any oral piercings I think could be really difficult if you're if you're doing any like brass Music, or woodwind yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Don't do not recommend. Wait a little while until you have a break from playing. So, um, Ursula's odds and sods. Hey, friend. I took your advice about retiring my second low piercings, and my ears are so much happier now. I'm also really excited about being able to go bigger with them in the in the way, or Yay. without them in the way. Woo. Awesome. Good job. Silently judging you. Uh, I tilt my doth forward to wear headphones behind it. Can't speak or anyone can't else. Speak can't speak for else, anyone else. Okay. Scott does the same thing. Look. Like they kind right of, but they're, but yeah. they're healed. <laughs> but, but they're, they're healed. healed. If yeah. you did this during yeah. the healing process, you're changing the angle, and that's exactly. going to cause bumps. So yeah. once you're healed, you can get away with stuff like that. Yep. I got dimple piercings four dimple, days ago. Yeah. Are they sticking out? They are, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Not really. I got yeah. dimple piercings four days ago, and my tongue feels like it's burning. Is this normal? Uh, I've never really heard of that. Cheeks, you mean? Yeah, cheek piercing. Yeah, I'm not sure about that either. My tongue is burning. Yeah, that... That sounds not mm, great. Yeah, that doesn't sound too <laughs> great. Um, are you are you using certain mouth rinses to, you know, question. take care of these? Because I do I not recommend anything with alcohol or whitening agents in it. Whitening agents typically contain a peroxide, and the alcohol is just going to burn and tear up your mouth. Um, I always tell people with oral piercings, carry around a bottle of water with you, nice, clean, purified water, obviously. That way, after you eat or drink anything, um, you're rinsing your mouth out in between and then just going about your normal dental hygiene, which would consist of just brushing your teeth, your tongue, and everything, and uh, mouth rinse without alcohol or whitening agent. So, um, yeah, it really depends. So... Hopefully All right, so we got three more Douglas. people we're going to take here. When stretching the septum, how long do you recommend waiting before going up a size? I got my septum pierced last week. And it says you got it pierced at a 10 gauge. You awesome. Got it pierced at a 10 gauge. Oh, heck yeah. Probably about two months before you even think about stretching, but I would almost say three months because you're going to be healed in the six to eight weeks, but then you want it to relax a little tiny bit. Um, so I would say around the two and a half to three month range is when you should think about going up. And then about a month and a half to two months between each size, depending on how it feels. If it hurts, don't do it. It's really that simple. Mm -hmm. Rebecca B. Kelsey, I'm so jealous that you once had seven genital piercings at once. I actually had six. Um, that is badass. Would you mind sharing which of them was the worst in terms of pain and healing? So I had four outer labia, the Christina and the VCH. VCH was super easy. Healing was within a couple of days. It felt like I had it forever. Um, outer labias, it was only about like two months, three months before I downsized. Um, they were healed within about four to six months. It felt like the Christina by far was the worst pain wise and healing wise. So yeah. And Unique, unique class, Classroom, yeah. we're ending with this one. It says, can you see your face better? Her horns look cool. 
Heck um, yeah. Yeah, she came in a little late, so the cameras aren't angled as well. But yeah, she's got some horns up there. I do. She does. All right. So this is where we're going to end this today. I want to thank awesome. you guys for joining me today. It was so of nice course. having you here. Thank all of you for being here, answering, asking such amazing questions. And of course, um, keep putting hold your body. See you all in the next video. See you next time. Bye. Bye. That where it says uh, Alejandro Martinez, Kelsey.